Dedication and Preface to the Lusiads. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Lenny. The Lusiads by Luís Vais de Camões. Translated by Sir Richard Francis Burton. Dedication to His Imperial Majesty Dom Pedro de Alcântara, Dom Pedro II, Constitutional Emperor and Perpetual Defender of the Brazil, to the men rather than the monarch, this version of a poem so dear to the heart of every Brazilian is offered by His Imperial Majesty's most obedient humble servant, the translator. Il far un libro è meno che niente, se il libro fatto non rifala gente. Giusti. Place, riches, favor, prizes of accident as oft as merit. Shakespeare. Ora toma espada, agora a pena. Now with the sword hilt, then with pen in hand. Camões, Sonnet 192. Bramo assai, poco spero, nulla quiero. Tasso. Tout se la prouve enfin, que l'ouvrage est plein de grands beautés. Puisque depuis deux cent ans, il fait les délices d'une nation spirituelle qui doit en connaître les fautes. Voltaire, Essai, etc. To my master, Camões. Tu sei lo mio maestro, il mio autore. Great pilgrim poet of the sea and land, thou lifelong sport of fortune's ficklest will, doomed to all human and inhuman ill, despite thy lover heart, thy hero hand and roll by thy pen what marvellous band of godlike forms thy golden pages fill love honour justice valour glory thrill the soul obedient to thy strong command amid the prophets highest sits the bard at once revealer of the heaven and earth to heaven the guide of earth the noblest guard and mid the poets thine the peerless worth whose glorious song thy genius soul reward, bids all the ages, Camões, bless thy birth. R. F. B. Editor's Preface I felt that I had no light task before me when I undertook to edit my husband's translation of Camões' Lusiades. The nearer I come to that work, the more mountainous does it appear, instead of dispersing, as most work does when one sets one's shoulder to the wheel. Yet I feel that no other than myself should do this office for him, for I shared his travels in Portugal, his four years up-country in Brazil, learned the language with him, and I have seen for nineteen and a half years the Camões table duly set apart, the bon bouche of the day. I have been daily and hourly consulted, as to this expression, or this or that change of word, this or that peculiarity of Camões. What, then, are those difficulties, you, the reader, will ask me? Let me try to explain. So many enterprising poet-authors have translated Camões, and received their meed of praise and popularity. In old times, Fenshaw, the best because so quaint. Then, Messrs. Mickle, Musgrave, and Mitchell. Laterly, Mr. J. J. Alberton, Mr. Duff, and Mr. Hewitt. But this translation stands apart from all the rest, as far apart as the Passionspiel of Oberammergau stands apart, as a grand dramatic act of devotion from all the other miracle plays now suppressed. This translation is not a literary tour de force, done against time or to earn a reputation. It is the result of a daily act of devotion of twenty years from a man of this age who has taken the hero of a former age for his model, his master, as Dante did Virgil, and between whose two fates, master and disciple, exists a strange and fatal similarity. What I tremble for in its publication is that it is too aesthetic for the British public, and will not meet with its due meed of appreciation as the commoner translations have done. If a thousand buy it, will a hundred read it, 
and will ten understand it? I say to myself, but then I brighten at the thought that to those ten it will be the gem of their library. It stands in poetry where Boito's Mephistopheles stands in music. He was not appalled by Gonot, nor Spo, nor Wagner, nor Meyerbeer, and in the opinion of many musicians has distanced them all. The first hearing of his opera takes away your breath, that is, if you are a musician. If not, it was a sin to occupy the place which would have been a seventh heaven to a musician. You don't understand it, nor pretend to do so, but you long to go again, and you do go, night after night, each time unfolding new beauties in each separate passage, until you know by heart, and have dissected the whole, nor even then do you tire, but enjoy it all the more. In this translation, whenever my husband has appeared to coin words, or to use impossible words, they are the exact rendering of Camões. In every singularity or seeming eccentricity, the disciple has faithfully followed his master, his object having been not simply to write good verse, but to give a literal word-for-word -word rendering of his favorite hero. And he has done it to the latter, not only in the words, but in the meaning and intention of Camões. To the unesthetic, to non-poets, non-linguists, non-musicians, non-artists, Burton's Lusiads will be an unknown land, an unknown tongue. One might as well expect them to enjoy a dominant seventh, or an inharmonic change in harmony. To be a poet, one must be a musician. To be a musician or a painter, one must have a poetic temperament, or the poetry or the music will have a hard metallic sound, and become a doggerel, a scherzo, the painting, a signpost. With this little explanation, I command this grand work to the study of the public. The commentaries will interest all alike. Isabel Burton, Trieste, July 19, 1880. Preface The most pleasing literary labor of my life has been to translate the Lusiads. One of my highest aims has been to produce a translation which shall associate my name, not unpleasantly, with that of my master, Camões. Those who favor me by reading this version are spared the long recital of why, how, and when Portugal's morrow became to me the perfection of a traveler's study. The first and chiefest charm was, doubtless, that of the man, a wayfarer and a voyager from his youth, a soldier, somewhat turbulent withal, wounded and blamed for his wounds, a moralist, a humorist, a satirist, and consequently no favorite with King Demos, a reverent and religious spirit after his own fashion, somewhat renaissance, poetic and pagan, by no means after the fashion of others, an outspoken, truth-telling, lucre-despising writer, a public servant, whose motto was, strange to say, honor, not honors, a doughty sword, and yet doughtier pen, a type of the chivalrous age, a patriot of the purest water, so jealous of his country's good fame that nothing would satisfy him but to see the world bow before her perfections, a genius, the first and foremost of his day, who died in the direst poverty and distress. Such in merest outline was the man, and such was the life which won the fondest and liveliest sympathies of the translator. Poetas por poetas sejam lidos, sejam só por poetas explicadas suas obras divinas. Still by the poets be the poets read, only be rendered by the poet's tongue their works divine, writes Manuel Correia. Mickle expresses the sentiment with more brevity and equal point. None but a poet can translate a poet, and Coleridge assigns to a poet the property of explaining a poet. Let me add that none but a traveller can do justice to a traveller. And it so happens that most of my wanderings have unconsciously formed a running and realistic commentary upon the Lusiads. I have not only visited almost every place named in the Epos of Commerce, in many I have spent months and even years. 
the arch poet of portugal paints from the life he has also the insight which we call intrude vision he sees with exact eyes where others are purblind or blind only they who have personally studied the originals of his pictures can appreciate their perfect combination of fidelity and realism with fancy and idealism here it is that the traveller translator may do good service with his specialty again like boccaccio camões reflects the lux ex oriente there is a perfume of the east in everything he writes of the east we find in his song much of its havoc and all its splendour oriental like he delights in the pathetic fallacy to lavish upon inanimates the attributes of animate sensation here again the student of things eastern the practical orientalist may be useful by drawing attention to points which escape the european however learned there are many translators of camoins yet to come we are an ephemeral race each one struggling to trample down his elder brother like the simoniacal popes in the malibold pit my first excuse for adding to the half-dozen translations in the field must be my long studies, geographical and anthropological. I can at least spare future writers the pains and penalties of saddling the exactest of poets with bad ethnology and worse topography. These may be small matters, but in local colouring every touch tells. My chief qualifications for the task, however, are a thorough appreciation of the poem, in a hearty admiration for the poet whom i learned to love in proportion as i learned to know him his lusiads has been described as une lecture saine et fortifiante i would say far more the singer's gracious and noble thoughts are reviving as the champagne air of the mountain top his verse has the true heroic ring of such old ballads as saint assovian devant la lance un mine en échelle en tout lieu, un prouesse les bons avances, ta dame te nommerait mieux. And with this love and sympathy of mine mingles not a little gratitude. During how many hopeless days and sleepless nights Camões was my companion, my consoler, my friend, on board raft and canoe, sailor and steamer, on the camel and the mule, under the tent and the jungle tree upon the fire-peak and the snow-peak, on the prairie, the campo, the steppe, the desert, where no conversable being can be found within a march of months, and when the hot blood of youth courses through the brain, and we and nostalgia are readily bred, while both are fatal to the explorer's full success. And, preferring to all softer lines the hard life of discovery travel, where things that own not man's dominion dwell, where foot of mortal man hath never been a career which combines cultivation and education with that resistless charm that poetry passion of the unknown whose joy of mere motion lightens all sorrows and disappointments which aids by commune with nature the proper study of mankind which enlarges the mental view as the hill head broadens the horizon which made julian a saint kisser a prophet and odin a god this heiselust i say being my ruling passion compelled me to seek a talisman against homesickness and the nervous troubles which learned men call phrenalgia and autophobia i found this talisman in camões and if it be true that by virtue of his perfect affection and veneration for homer whom he loved as a second self chapman was enabled to reflect a something of the old greek's magic force and fire I also may be permitted to hope that complete sympathy with my poet will enable me to present the public with a copy not unworthy of Camões' immortal work. After all, to speak without undue modesty, my most cogent reason for printing this translation of my master is simply because I prefer it to all that have appeared. Others will think otherwise, and there is a judge from whose sentence lies no present appeal. I have spared no labor on the work. I have satisfied myself, if not malbouche, and I repeat my motto, poco spero, nulla quiero. If a concurrency of adverse trifles prevent my being appreciated now, the day will come, happily somewhat late, 
when men will praise what they now pass by. Richard Francis Burton Cairo, May 1, 1880 Note Contrary to custom, I begin with my translation of the poem, and end with what usually comes first, the commentary. This introduction, now converted to a postscript, is necessary for the full comprehension of an epic upwards of three centuries old. But, believing in the liberty of footnotes, I have appended a few, which will save many readers the mortification of consulting the conclusion. The following synopsis of the Lusiades shows the raison d'être of my commentary. Canto I. The Voyage. In Stanzas 106, lines 848. Canto II. The Voyage. In Stanzas 113, lines 904. Canto III. Historical. In Stanzas 143, lines 1144. Canto IV. Historical. In Stanzas 104, lines 832. Canto V. The Voyage and Geographical. Stanzas 100, lines 800. Canto VI. The Voyage and Geographical. Stanzas 99, lines 792. Canto VII. Geographical Historical. Stanzas 87, lines 696. Canto VIII. Historical. In Stanzas 99, lines 792. Canto IX. Romantic. In Stanzas 95, line 760. Canto 10. Geographical, Ethnographical, Historical. In Stanzas 156, lines 1248. Totals. Stanzas 1102, lines 8816. The text of the poem is immediately followed by the 79 Estancias Desprezadas, or stanzas which, omitted by Camões, were printed from manuscripts after his death. Of these 632 lines, many were rejected for special reasons, and not a few deserve translation. They are here offered to the public for the first time. Thus, my commentary falls naturally into four chapters. Chapter 1, Biographical, with three sections. Section 1, Essay on the Life of Camões. Section 2, Camões the Man. And Section 3, Camões the Poet. Chapter 2, Bibliographical, with five sections. Section 1, On Translating the Lusiads. Section 2, English Translators with Specimens. Section 3, Notices of English Translators. Section 4, Minor, Partial, and Miscellaneous English Translations. And Section 5, The Present Version. Chapter 3. Historical and Chronological, with four sections. Section 1. Portugal before the reign of Dom João II. Section 2. Dom João III and Dom Manuel. Section 3. The reign of Dom João III. And Section 4. The annals of his country till the death of Camões. Chapter 4. Geographical, with four sections. Section 1. Preliminary. Section 2. The Voyage of da Gama. Section 3. The Travels and Campaigns of Camões in the Nearer East, and, section 4, in the Further East. I make no apology for the length of this topographical essay. The subject has been much neglected by modern commentators. Chapter 5. A Notative. I have here placed explicatory and philological details, which illustrate the ten cantus, concluding with three tables borrowed from various sources. Number 1. Editions of the Works of Camões. Number two, tables of translations of the works, especially the Lusiads. And number three, contents of the Lusiads, which may serve as an index of subjects. In conclusion, I have to thank Monsieur Wyman for the care and trouble they have taken in printing the translation. Trieste, July 10th, 1880. End of Dedication and Preface Canto One of the Lusiads. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Lenny. The Lusiads by Luis Valles de Camões, translated by Sir Richard Francis Burton. Canto One. Argument of the First Canto. The Portuguese navigate the eastern seas. The gods hold their council. 
Bacchus opposeth himself to this navigation. Venus and Mars favor the navigators. They arrive at Mozambique, the governor whereof attempteth to destroy them. Encounter and first military action of our people with the Gentiles. They weigh anchor, and, passing Kiloa, they ride in the roadstead of Mombasa. Another Argument Fazem concílios deuses na alta corte. Opõe-se Baco à Lusitana gente. Favorece a Vênus e Mavorte, e em Moçambique lança o ferro e o dente. Depois de aqui mostrar seu braço forte, destruindo e matando juntamente, torna as partes buscar da roxa aurora, e chegando a Mombasa surge fora. The gods hold counsel heaven's high court within. Bacchus are Lucian braves to thwart doth seek who meet of Mars and grace of Venus gain, to cast the fairest tooth in Mozambique. Thence, when their arm of power displayed had been, death and destruction on the foe to wreak, fareth the fleet where red aurora bideth, and reached Mombasa town outside it rideth. Canto One. The feats of arms, in famed heroic host, from Occidental Lusitanian strand, who o'er the waters ne'er by seamen crossed, fared beyond the Taprobane land, forceful in perils and in battle post, with more than promised force of mortal hand, and in the regions of a distant race, reared a new throne so hot in pride of place, and eke the kings of memory grand and glorious, who hide them holy faith and reign to spread converting conquering and in lands notorious africa and asia devastation made nor less the lieges who by deeds memorious break from the doom that binds the vulgar dead my song would sound o'er earth's extremest part were mine the genius mine the poet's art seize the sage grecian and the men of troy to vaunt long voyage made in bygone day seize alexander Trajan ceased to joy, the fame of victories that have passed away. The noble Lucian stouter breast sing I, whom Mars and Neptune dared not disobey. Seize all that antique muse hath sung, for now a better bravery rears its bolder brow. And you, my Tajan nymphs, who have create in me new purpose with new genius firing, if was my joy while ere to celebrate, your founts and stream my humble song inspiring. Ho, oh, lend me here a noble strain elate, a style grandiloquent that flows untiring. So shall Apollo for your waves ordain me, in name and fame, ne'er envy Hippocrane. Grant me sonorous accents, fire bounding. Now serves ne peasant pipe, ne rustic reed, but blast of trumpet, long and loud resounding that flameth hard and hue to fiery deed. Grant me high strains to suit their jests astounding, your sons, who aided Mars in martial need, that o'er the world be sung the glorious song, if themes so lofty may to verse belong. And thou, O goodly omen trust, all dear to Lusitania's olden liberty, whereon assured aspirants we rear in force to see our frail Christianity, Thou, O oh, new terror to the Moorish sphere, the fated marvel of our century, to govern worlds of men by God so given, that the world's best be given to God in heaven. Thou young, thou tender, ever flourishing bough, true sign of tree by Christ beloved more, than aught that Occident did ever know, Caesarian or most Christian style before. Look on thy scutcheon, and behold it show, the present victory long past ages bore, arms which he gave and made thine own to be, by him assumed on the fatal tree. Thou, mighty sovereign, o'er whose lofty reign the rising sun reigns earliest smile of light, sees it from middle firmamental plain, and sights it sinking on the breast of night. Thou, whom we hope to hail the blight, the bane of the dishonored Ishmaelitish night, an orient turk and gentle misbeliever that drinks the liquor of the sacred river incline awhile i pray that majesty 
which in thy tender years I see thus ample, in now prefiguring full maturity that shall be shrined in fame's eternal temple, those royal eyne that beam benignity bend on low earth, behold a new ensemble of hero hearts with patriot pride inflamed, in numbered verses manifold proclaimed. Thou shalt see love of land that ne'er shall own lust of vile lucre, soaring towards the eternal. For tis no light ambition to be known, the claimed herald of my nest paternal. Here thou shalt see the great names greater grown, of vavasors who hail the Lord supernal. So shalt thou judge, which were the higher station, king of the world, or lord of such a nation. Hark! For with vauntings vain thou shalt not view fantastical, fictitious, lie indeed, of lieges lauded, as strange muses do, seeking their fond and foolish pride to feed. Thine acts so forceful are, told simply true, all fabled, dreamy feats they far exceed, exceeding Rodomont and Ruggiero vain, and Roland haply born of poet's brain. For these I give thee a Nuno fierce in fight, who for his king and country freely bled, and Agus and Aphuas, fain I might, for them my lay with harp Homeric wed. For the twelve peerless peers again I sight, the twelve of England, by Magriso led. Nay, more, I give thee Gama's noble name, who for himself claims all Aeneas' fame. And if in change for royal Charles of friends, or rivaling Caesar's memories thou wouldst throw, the first Afonso see, whose conquering lands lays highest boast of stranger glories, lo, see him who left his realm the inheritance, fair safety, born of wars that crushed the foe. That other John, a knight no fear deterred, the fourth and fifth Afonso, and the third. Nor shall they silent in my song remain, they who in regions there where dawns arise, by acts of arms such glorious toil to gain, where thine unvanquished flag for ever flies. Pacheco, brave of braves, thou madest twain, whom Tagus mourns with ever-weeping eyes. Dread Albuquerque, Castro stark and brave, with more the victors of the very grave. But singing these, of thee I may not sing. O king sublime, such theme I fain must fear. Take of thy reign the reins, so shall my king create a poesy new to mortal ear. E'en now the mighty burden here I ring, and speed its terrors over all the sphere, of singular prowess, wars on prodigies, in Afric regions and on Orient seas. Casteth on thee the moor eyne cold with fright, in whom his coming doom he views designed, the barbarous gentoo, sold to see thy sight, yields to thy yoke, the neck in now inclined. Tethys of Azur sees the sovereign right, her realm in dowry hath to thee resigned, and by thy noble tender beauty one would bribe and buy thee to become her son. And thee from high Olympic halls behold themselves, thy grandsire sprites, far famed pair, this clad in peacetide's angel robe of gold, that crimson hued with paint of battle glare, by thee they hope to see their tale twice told, their lofty memories live again, and there, when time thy years shall end, for thee they sign a seat where soareth fame's eternal shrine. But Sidon's ancient time slow minutes by, ere rule the peoples who desire such boon, bend on my novel rashness favoring eye, that these my verses may become thine own. So shalt thou see thine argonets o'erfly, Yon salty argent, when they see it shown, Thou seest their labors on the raging sea, Learn even now invoked of men to be. They walk the waters vasty breadth of blue, Parting the restless billows on their way, Fair favoring breezes breathed soft and true, The belling canvas bulging in their play. The seas were spread with foam of creamy hue, Flashing where'er the prow's wide open lay, The sacred spaces of that ocean plain, Where Proteus' cattle cleave his own domain, When they who hold Olympic luminous height, 
the gods and governors of our human race, convened, in glorious conclave all unite, the coming course of eastern things to trace. Treading the glassy dome of lovely light, along the Milky Way conjoined they pace, gathered together at the thunder's hest, and by old Atlas' gentle grandson pressed. They leave the regiment of the firmament seven, to them committed by his high command. His power sublime, whose thoughtful will hath given, order to skies, and angry seas, and land. Then instant gather in the size of heaven, those who are throned on far Arturus' strand, and those that Oster rule in Orient tides, where springs Aurora and clear Phoebus hides. Repose it there, the sire sublime and dying, Vibrates whose hand the fierce Vulcanian ray, On seat of starry splendor crystalline, Grand in his lofty jest of sovereign sway. Respired from his brow such air divine, That to the vine could change dull human clay, Bearing the crown and scepter rudolent, Of clearer stone than clearest diamond. On sparkling seats, with marquetry inlaid, of gold and pearl work sat in lower state the minor godheads marshalled and arrayed in as demanded reason rank and rate highest the seniors of most honored grade lower down the lower deity say when thus high jove the deathless throng addressed with awful accents dealing gravest hest immortal peoples of the starlit pole whose seats adorn this constellated sphere if the stout race of valor-breathing soul from Lysus springing still to thought be dear, your high intelligence leave unroll the writ of mighty fate, her will is clear. This deed to cold oblivion's shade shall doom the fame of Persia, Assyria, Greece, and Rome. To them twas erst, and well they wotted, given, albeit a parcel single, simple, small, to see the doughty moor from trenchments driven, where gentle Tagus feeds and floods the vale. Then, with the dreadful Spaniard have they striven, by boon of heaven serene ne'er known to fail, and urge their fortune's ever-glorious claim to victor trophies hung in fane of fame. Godheads, I leave that antique fame unsaid, reft from the race of Romulus their foes, when, by their warrior Viriatus led, so high in Roman wars their names arose, eke leave I memories which to merited, honor obliged when for chief they chose, that perfect captain erst a peregrine foe, who feigned a demon in his milk-white doe. Now well you see, how still their souls to steer, a fragile bark through dubious watery way, by paths unused, and holding not in fear, Notice and offers force, walks bolder they. How whilom every region left to rear, Where suns or shorten or draw along the day, On wings of stubborn will these men be born, To sight the cradles of the nascent morn. Promise them fate's eternal covenant, Whose high commandments none shall dare despise. For years full many they shall rule the extent of seas That see the ruddy suns arise. On wavy wastes hard winter have they spent, or work they come by travailing in prize, to where meet we show them, thus it seemeth me, the fair new region which they fain would see. And as their valor so you trow defied on Asper's voyage cruel harm and sore, so many changing skies their men who tried, such climes where storm winds blow and billows roar. My sovereign mandate this, be theirs to ride in friendly haven on the Blackmoor shore. Whence shall the weary fleet, with every need garnished, once more her long-drawn voyage speed? Thus hearing Jupiter's decree pronounced, each god responsive spoke in order due. Contrasting judgment one and all announced, giving and taking various diverse view. But Father Bacchus then and there renounced homage to Jove's command, who right well knew his deeds on Orient lawn would leave no trace, were furtherance granted to the Lusian race. The fatal sisters he had heard declare, how from his Spanian bounds a hero band should spend the pathless deep, and not should spare, 
wherever Doris bathed Indian strand, should with new victories every deed out there, done or by his or other stranger hand. Profound his sorrows, lest he lose the glory, the name still celebrate in the Nissan story. His seeds, while Indus he of yore had tamed, fortune or favoring chance had aid and eyed, to hear him India's conqueror acclaimed, by bardic men who drained Parnassus tide. And now he dreadeth lest a name so fain be doomed for ever in the mire to hide of Lady Fountain, if on in the bark this vague Portingal so strong and stark. But him opposed Venus, lovely fair, whose heart her losing sons had won the more, since in them seen the qualities high and rare, the gifts that decked her Romans dear of yore, the heart of valor and the potent star, whose splendor dazzled in Jatan and shore, and in the music of their speech appears soft bastard Latin to her loving ears. These causes moved Cytherea's sprite, and more when learned she that the fates intended the queen of beauty should be glorious height, where'er their warriors sway her sons extended. Thus he, who feared future stain and blight, and she, whose heart to honor's high pretended, urged the debate, in obstinate strife remaining, with favoring friends each rival right maintaining. As the fierce south were boreas in the shade of sylvan upland where the tribbles cluster, the branches shattering crash through glooming glade, with horrid hurry and infuriate fluster, roars all the mountain, echo moans in dread, torn is the leafy, hillheads boil and bluster, such gusty tumults rise amid the gods, within Olympus' consecrate abodes. But Mars, for ever wont to espouse the part of his dear goddess, whatsoever the case, or for old love that flickered in his heart, or for the merits of her fighting race, forth from the gods upsprang with sudden start. Stern melancholy marked his jest and face, the ponderous pavos from his gorget hung, behind his shoulders full of wrath he flung. His bivouart helmet of the diamond stone, opening a little of his strength right sure, his sense to speak he strode and stood alone, Jupiter facing, armed, dour and dour. Then, with hard penetrant blow, he bore adown his steely spear-hill on the pavement pure. Quaked the welkin, and Apollo's ray waxed somewhat one, as though by cold dismay. And thus, omnipotent sire, whose awful reign perforce obeyeth all thy power hath made, if these, who seek a new half-world to gain, whose deeds of bravery hast with love surveyed, Thou wouldst not girden with a shame and stain that erst were favored through the years that fade. Listen no longer thou, sole judge direct, to glozing reasons all we gods suspect. For did not reason in this matter show herself the victim of unmeasured fear? Better beseems it Bacchus love bestow on Lys's children once his comrade dear. But let this vain and splenetic purpose go, since bread of evil stomach. For tis clear that alien envy ne'er shall turn to woes what real men merit and the gods dispose. And thou, O sire of surest constancy, from the determined purpose of thy mind to thee not backwards, weakness were in thee now to desist thee from the thing designed. Send forth thine agile herald Mercury, fleeter than trimmed shaft or winnowing wind, and show some happy height where rest shall joy all weary breasts with news of Indian eye. As thus he said, the sire of sovereign might assented, nodding grave his awful head to Mars' opinion, ever fain of fight, and o'er the council showers of nectar shed. The galaxy, the pathway glowing bright, the deities all the sparting rose to tread, royal obeisance making, and the road each took returning to his own abode. While thus it happens in the ethereal reign, omnipotent Olympic height serene, the warrior people cut the curved main, austral and oriental course between, where fronts the face of Ethiopic plain, far famed St. Lawrence Isle, Saul's brightest sheen, upon the water deities rained fire, who, changed to fishes, scaped Diphius' ire. 
the wafting winds so winsome urged their way, as though the smiling heavens dear friends defended, serene the welkin and the lucid day, dawn suns a cloud nor aught of risk pretended. Astern the leek green point of prosum lay, an olden name where Ethiop coast extended, when ocean opening broad a vista showed of islets fondled by the circling flood. Vasco da Gama, valiant capitain, for during do the noblest volunteer, of notable courage and of noble strain, whom smile of constant fortune loved to cheer, seeth no reason why he should remain, where shows the shore like desert, dark and drear. Once more determined he to tempt the sea, but as he willed, fortune nil did be. For look, appeareth a flotilla yonder, mosquito craft that cleave the rolling tide, and with their flowing sails the surges sunder from the small island next the continent side. The crews rejoicing in their hope and wonder could gaze on naught save what their hearts had joy. Who may be these? each asked him in amaze. What lobby theirs, what ruler, what their ways? The boats appeared in a manner new, long-built and narrow-beamed for swiftness planned. Mats were the wings wherewith they lightly flew from certain palm fronts wove by cunning hand. The people wore that veritable hue, Phaeton's boon to many a burning land, when worked his rashness on the world such ills, so Pada's nose and Lampethusa feels. They come costumed all in cotton gear, of hues contrasting, striped, checked, and white, one zongered cloth around the waist they wear, other they throw on back in airy plight. Above the waistband each brown form is bare, deck targe and matchet are their arms of fight, school cap on head, and, as they wend their way, shriek shrilly shawms and harsh-voiced trumpets bray. Waving their raiment and their hands they signed, the Lusitanian folk to wait a while, but our light prores their course had now inclined, to strike where sheltered by the nearest isle. Soldiers and sailors in one toil conjoined, as though were here the period of their toil. They take in sail, and strike the lofty spear, and ocean anchors mid froths high in air. Nor had they anchored when the stranger race, the shrouds of swarming, ready footing gained. Joy as they cluster, glad of jest and face, our captain gracious greetings gives unfeigned. He bids incontinent the board to grace with vinous liquor, firstly nails drained. They crown the crystal cups, the proffered wine, fight and scorched folk no wise decline. A feasting cheery all the guests inquired, in Arab language, whence had come their hosts? Who were they? Were their land? What they desired? What seas their keels had cut, and conned what coasts? The valiant Lusians answered with required discretion and asking foolish boasts. We are the Occidental Portuguese, and seeking Orient lands we sail the seas. We now have coasted, running ocean o'er Callistus Arctic and the Antarctic lands. Our course hath circled Afric's winding shore, strange skies exploring, and yet stranger strands. Ours is a potent king, loved evermore, and we so prize his praise and his commands, with being right joyful, not the sea and sky, but even Acheron Lake we dare defy. And when we seeking by his royal will, were farthest in this watered eastern plain. For him through wild white waves we hoist the sail, where ugly seals and orcs deform the main. But reason tells us that ye may not fail to answer, and of truth your souls be fain. Who are ye? What this land wherein ye won? And sign of India is to you benown? We live, an island man thus answering said, aliens in land and law and eke in blood, where native races are by nature bred, a lawless, loutish, and unreasoned brood. We hold his certain law, that holy seed, springing from Abram's loins, who hath subdued the nation subject to his seigneur true, by sire a Gentile, and by mother Jew. This little island, where we now abide, of all the seaboard is the one sure place for every merchantman that stems the tide, from Kiloa or Safala or Mombay's, here, as tis necessary, long we've tried to house and home us, like its proper race. And fine, to find you with the facts you seek, man calls our little island Mozambique. 
and as far faring now ye come to view indic hidaspis and his burning board hence ye shall bear a pilot sure and true whose skill the safest guidance shall afford twere also well ere you your toils renew we tell to ship and let our island lord who governeth this island his guests behold and stock with needed store each empty hold his speech thus spake the moor and took his leave he and his meany where the battles lay formal farewells to chief and crews he gave exchanging conges with due courtesy now weary phoebus in the western wave had stalled the crystal chariot of the day and gave his bright-browed sister charge to loom the vest of earth while lasted nightly gloom aboard a wayworn fleet blithe sped the night in careless joyance wrecking not of fear for the far land which long had scaped their sight at length gave tidings and at last lay near now to take notice gins each curious wight of the strange people's manners ways and gear and much they marvelled how the sack misguided where earth's broad surface far and wide abided rain luna's radiance shedding rutland showers or neptune's wavelets tipped with silver sheen and like the mamied flag with daisy flowers spread with its sparkling stars the sky was seen the blustering storm wind slept in distant bowers enters obscure in regions peregrine yet on the armada's decks a weapon guard cap as so long they want good watch and ward but when aurora with her marquetry gainst through the glorious honors of her head or the clear heavens and ope the ruddy way to bright hyperion rising from his bed Leaf is the fleet to dress in brave array of flags and goodly awnings gay to spread that all may greet with holiday and hail that island lord who came with flowing sail he came right merrily o'er the main and sought to view our nimble lusitanian fleet bringing his country cates for twas his thought in the fierce foreigner perchance to meet the racing human which hath ever fought to change its caspian caves for happier seat in asian continent and by will divine of rule imperial robbed constantine with glad reception our commander meets the moorish chieftain and his whole convoy whom with a gift of richest gear he greets whereof a store was shipped for such employ he gives him rich conserves he gives rare treats the liquors hot which fill men's heart with joy good be the gifts the moor contented thinks but more the sweetmeats prizes most the drinks the sailor people sprung from luz's blood in wandering clusters to the red lines clung noting the stranger's novel mode and mood with his so barbarous and perplexed tongue some time the wily moor confused stood eyeing the garb the hue the fleet the throng and asked with questions manifold assailing if they from turkey land perchance were hailing he further tells them how he longs to see what books their credence law and faith contain if these conforming with his own agree or were as well he weened of christian grain nay more that hidden naught from him may be he prayed the captain would be pleased to ordain that be displayed in every puissant arm wherewith the foreigners work their foemen harm to this the doughty chieftain deals reply through one that obscure jargon knowing well illustrious senior i fain will try all of ourselves our arms are creed to tell nor of the country kith or kin am i of irksome races that in turkey dwell my home is warlike europe and i wend seeking the far famed lands or farthest end i hold the law of one by worlds obeyed by visible things and things invisible he who the hemispheres from naught hath made with sentient things and things insensible who with vituperate foul reproach berate was doomed to suffer death insufferable and who in fine by heaven to earth was given that men through him might rise from earth to heaven of this god man most highest infinite the books thou wouldst behold i have not brought we stand excused of bringing what men write on paper when in sprite is written wrought but and with weapons wouldst refresh thy sight as thou hast asked i deny thee not a friend to friends i show them and i vow ne'er wouldst be shown their temper as my foe 
This said, he bids his armors diligent, bring arms and armor for the moorman viewer. Come sheeny harness, corslets lucident, the fine wove mail coat and plate armor sure. Shields decorate with scutcheons different, bullets and spingards, dice brooks temper pure. Bows, quivers furnished with the grinded pile, the sharp edged partisan, the good brown bill. Broth are the fiery bombs while they prepare sulphurous stink pots and grenades of fire. But then a Vulcan biddeth he to spare their dread artillery belching flames in ire. Not did that gentle, generous spirit care with fear the few and fearful folk to inspire, and write his reasoning, twere both too cheap to play the lion on the silly sheep. But from whate'er the observant woman heard, and from water his prying glance could see, a settled deadly hate his spirit stirred, an evil crave of treacherous cowardry. No sign of change he showed in jest or word, but with a gay and gallant feigning he vowed in looks and words to treat them fair, till deeds his daring purpose could declare. The captain prayed him pilots to purvey, his squadron far as Indian shore to guide, so should with wealthy hire and worthy pay the labor's toil and moil be gratified. Promise the moorman sorely led astray by venomous heart and with such poison pride that death in place of pilot at that hour his hand had given and it had the power. So hot that hatred, sharp that enmity, wherewith his spirit against his guests was fraught, that knew them followers of that verity by the seed of David to our fathers taught. O darkling secret of eternity, whereof men's judgment may encompass not, why should they never lack perfidious foe, who such fair symbols of thy friendship show? At length, surrounded by his crafty crew, the treacher moorman from our ships do leave, an all-bestowing bella coil and true, with fair, glad phrase designed to deceive. Soon o'er the narrow way his barklets flew, and landing safely from the Tunian wave, the moorman, whom his suit of sepious greed, regains his homestead and his wonted seed. From Eder's radiant seat, Thebes' mighty son, the god to mother, sprung from father thy, seeing the Lucian host had straight begun the moorman's hate and horror to defy, fixed every project some foul feet upon by which the stranger host might surely die and while the plot his spirit importuned, thus in soliloquy the god communed. Fate hath determined in olden time that conquests fit the self of fame of face, this port engulf shall claim in every clime where India rears her worn and noble race. Shall only I, the son of Cyrus sublime, I, whom such generous gifts and guerdons grace, suffer that favoring fate success assure to men whose labors Shall my name obscure? Erst will the gods, who will the way the right to Philip's son, that o'er this orient part he holds such power, and displays such might, which bound the world neath yoke of angry mark? But shall I tamely suffer fate's despite, who lends these weaklings power of arm and art, Macedon's hero, Roman brave, and I, before the Lucian name be doomed to fly? This must not, shall not be, Ere he arrived, this froward captain, at his fancied goal, such cunning machinations I'll contrive, never shall orient parts his side console. And now, to earth, where I will keep alive the fire of fury in the Moorish soul, for him shall fortune with success undo, who on occasion keepeth fixed view. He spoke in fury, nay, well-nigh insane, and straight he lighted on the negro shore, where, mortal jest and human vesture tame, he made for prosen headland famed of yore. Better to weave his web of wily bane, he changed his natural shape until it wore a moorman's likeness, known in Mozambique, a crafty greybeard favored of the sheik. And entering him to read at our end time most fitting, deemed for design while, a tale of piracy he told, and crying, wrought by the strangers harbored in his isle. How all the resident nations maritime bruited reports of battle, death, and spoil, at every haven where the foreigner passed, 
who with false pacts of peace his anchors cast. And know thou further, quoth the moor, tis sad, anent these Christian knaves sanguinolent, that, so to speak, they guard the waves run red, scathing with fire and steel where'er they went. Far-framed plotting certs have been laid against ourselves, for tis their whole intent our homes to rifle, to destroy our lives, and chain our children, and enslave our wives. I also learned how determined be, forthwith for watering toward the land to steer, this captain with a doughty company, for evil purpose ever getteth fear. Go to, and take thy men at arms with thee, waiting him silent in well-ambushed rear, so shall his people, lending unawares, fall ready victims to thy ruse and snares. And even should they by this notable feat fail to be scattered, shattered, wholly slain, I have imagined the rare conceit of marvellous cunning which thy heart shall gain. A pilot bid be brought of wily wit, nor less astute to lay the skilful train, who shall the stranger lead where bane and bale Loss, death, destruction weighed on every sail. These words of wisdom hardly had he stayed when the moor chieftain, old and fraud and wise, fell on his bosom and full glad obeyed such counsel finding favor in his eyes. Then, instant faring forth, he ready made for the base warfare bellicose supplies. So might the Lusian see when gained the shore the wished for waters turn to crimson gore. And eke he seeketh such deceit to speed, a Moslem loadsman who the prow shall die, shrewd, subtle villain, prompt to wicked deed, whereon for dangerous feet he most relied. Him he commands the Lusitan to lead, and with him hug such coasts and stem such tide, that in escaping present dangers all, he further went and whence none rise shall fall. Already lit Apollo's morning ray, the Nabathean mounts with rosy light, when died was Gama and his stout array by sea for watering on the land to light. Their boats the soldiers armed for fight and fray, as though they scented tricks of Moslem spite. He was suspicion easy, for the wise bear a presaging heart that never lies. Further, the messenger who went ashore to claim the promise of the needful guide heard tone of battle when replied the moor, though none had deemed he had thus replied. Wherefore, in wrecking right how sore they store, who in perfidious enemy confide, he fought forearmed, forewarned, and risking not, in his three launches all the boats he brought. But now the moormen, stalking o'er the strand, to guard the watch restores the stranger's need, this, targe on arm, and assegai in hand, that, with his bended bow and venomed reed, wait till the warlike people leap to land. Far stronger forces are in ambush hid, and that the venture made the lighter seem a few decoys patrol about the stream. Along the snow-white sandy marge advance the bellic moors who back their coming foes. They shake the shield and poise the perilous lance, daring the warrior Portuguese to close. The generous people, with impatient glance, the bent dog's eye would dare their fangs expose. They spring ashore so deftly no man durst say who the soldier that touched land the first. As in the gory ring some gallant gay, on his fair lady love with firm fixed eyes, seeketh the furious bull and bars the way, bounds, runs, and whistles, backs and shouts and cries, the cruel monster sons of thoughts delay. Lowering its horned front in fury flies, with iron fast closed, and roaring hurried sound, throws gores and leaves him lifeless on the ground. Lo, from the launches sudden flash the lights of fierce artillery with infuriate blare. The leaden bullet kills, the thunder frights, and hissing echoes cleave the shrinking air. Now break the moormen's hearts and haughty sprites, whose blood cold curdles with a ghastly fear. The skulking coward flies his life to save, and dies to death, exposed the daring brave. With all the portingals are not content, fierce victory urging on, they smite and slay. The wallace, undefended settlement, they shell and burn and make an easy prey. 
the moors they raid and razia sore repent who looked for victory won in cheaper way now they blaspheme the battle cursing wild though meddling fool and her that bears such child still in his flight the moorman draweth bow but forceless frighted flurried by alarms showers of ashlar sticks and stones they throw their madding fury ministereth arms now from their islet homesteads flocking row toward the mainland trembling terrified swarms they pass apace and cut the narrow sound the thin sea arm which runs their islet round these ply the deeply laden almady those cut the waves and diligence swim the main some choke neath bending surge of surf ye see some drink the brine out puffing it again the crank canoes wherein the vermin flee are torn by smaller bombards fiery rain thus wise in fine the portingals chastise their vile malicious treacherous enemies now to the squadron when the day was won rich with their warlike spoils the braves retire and ship at leisure water all their own none meet offence where none to offend desire the moors heart-broken vainly make their moan old hatreds flaming with renewed fire and hopeless to revenge such foul defeat nourish the fairest hopes of fresh deceit to proffer truce repentant gives command the moor who ruleth that iniquous shore nor do the lusitanians understand that in fair guise of peace he proffers war for the false pilot sent to show the land who every evil will and bosom bore only to guide them deathwards had been sent such was the signal of what peace was meant the capitain who now once more inclined on wonted way and custom course to high fair weather favoring with propitious wind and when where india's long-wished regions lie received the helmsman for his ill design who greeted was with joyous courtesy and given his answer to the messenger in the free gale shakes out his sailing gear dismissed by such device the gallant fleet divideth amphitrite's wavy way the maids of nereus troop its course to greet faithful companions debonair and gay the captain no ways doubting the deceit planned by the moorman to secure his prey questions him largely learning all he knows of general end and what each seaboard shows but the false moorman skilled in all the snares which baleful bacchus taught for such emprise new loss by death or prison life prepares ere india's seaboard glad their straining eyes the heights of india diligent he declares to frequent queries offering fit replies for holding faithful all their pilots said the gallant people were of naught afraid and eke he telleth with that false intent whereby fell sinan bulked the phrygian race of a near line isle that a had lent to christian dwellers safest dwelling place our chief of tidings fame gave due attend of year so gladly to these words of grace that with the richest gifts he bade the guide lead him to regions where such men abide e'en so that losel moorman had design as the confiding christian begged and bade knowing his islet was of old a sign to the malignant sons of mohammed here he foresees the seat with death combined for that in power and force the place outweighed weaker mozambique in that islet's name is kilwa bruited by the blast of fame thither the exulting squadron leaf would steer but the fair god Sathira loves to greet seeing its certain courses changed to near the coasts where doom of death awaits defeat nils that the people loved with love so dear such dreadful fates on shore so distant meet and raising adverse gales she drives them wide from the foul goal where guides that fell on guide now when the caitiff moor could not but know that in this matter useless was his guile seeking to deal another devilish blow and still persistent in his purpose vile he urgeth since the winds and currents flow had borne them on par fours full many a mile they near another island and its race christian and moor hold common dwelling place here too with every word the liar lied as by his regiment he in fine was bound for none who christ adore could there abide only the hounds who worship false mahound 
the captain trustful to his moorish guide veering the sails was making for the sound but as his guardian goddess leave the knife he shuns the river bar and outside life so near that islet lay along the land not save a narrow channel stood atween and rose's city throned on the strand which from the margin of the seas was seen fair built with lordly buildings tall and grand as from its offing showed all its sheen here ruled a monarch for long years high fame islet and city are mombasa named and when the captain made that happy shore with strangest joyance in the hope to view baptized peoples and to greet once more dear christian men as swear his guide and true lo boats come bearing the blue waters o'er their king's good greeting who the stranger knew for long had bacchus of the event advised and other moormen's shape and form disguised friendly the message which the foeman brought beneath whose surface covered venom lay for deadly hostile was their every thought and soon the hidden fraud and cover day o oh, dreadful dangers with destruction fraught o oh, line of life tight never certain way where e'er his dearest whole poor mortal hoardeth such scant security life ever affordeth by sea such tempests such sore injury with death so often showing near and sure by land such warfare such foul treachery so much of cursed necessities to endure ha where shall weary man take sanctuary where live his little span of life secure in scape of heaven serene the indignant storms that launch their thunders at us earth and worms end of canto one Canto two of the Lusiads. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Lenny. The Lusiads by Luis Vaz de Camões. Translated by Sir Richard Francis Burton. Canto two. Twas now the period when the planet bright, whose rays distinguisheth the hours of day, did at his longed for tardy goal alight, veiling from human eye his heavenly ray and of his ocean home deep hid from sight the god of night-tide oped the portal way when the false crafty foe came flocking round the ships whose anchors scarce had bit the ground mid them a villain who had undertaken the task of deadly damage spake aloud o valorous captain who hast cut the rain of neptune and his salty plain has ploughed the king who governeth this island feigned to greet thy coming is so pleased and proud he wisheth nothing save to be thy host to see thee and supply what need ye most and as he burneth with extreme desire so famed the personage to behold and greet he prays suspicion may no fear inspire but cross the bar line thou and all thy fleet and sith by voyage long men greatly tire thy gallant crew by travel toil is beat he bids thee welcome to refit on land, as cert nature must such rest command. And if thou wendest seeking merchandise got in the golden womb of the Levant, cinnamon, cloves, and biting spiceries, health-dealing drug or rare and excellent plant, or if thou lust for sparkling stones of price, the ruby fine, the rigid diamond, hence shalt thou bear such full, abundant store, that in thy fancy shall affect no more unto the herald straight our chief replieth grateful acknowledging the royal hest and saith that seeing saul now seawards hieth he may not enter as becomes a guest but when returning light shall show where lieth the way some danger with a fearless breast the royal orders he will list fulfil a lord so gracious hath claim higher still he questions further and the land contain christian peoples as the pilots swear the cunning herald who ne'er speaks in vain voucheth that christian men dwell mostly there thus doth he banish from our captain's brain the cautious fantasies of doubt and fear wherefore the gamma straightways gan to place faith in that faithless unbeliever race and as condemned felons he had brought convict of mortal crime and shameful deed 
who might in similar cases danger fraught be ventured where the common will has need a twain of wily well-tried wits he sought bade them the moorman's craft and trickeries heed go spy the city's power and seek to see whether desired christians there may be fair gifts he gave them for the royal hand to quit the goodly will the greeting showed by him held sure and firm and clear and bland whereas twas cleanly of a country mode now all the route perfidious and the fan quitting the squadron o'er the waters rode with gladsome joyous gestures all deceit the pair of shipmates on the shore they greet and when in presence of the king conveyed the gifts they gave and message did present far less they witnessed as about town they strayed than what they wanted on their work intent the shrewd sagacious moors pretences made to view from sight what they to see were sent for where reigns malice there we ever find the fear of malice in a neighbor's mind but he for ever fair for ever young in form and feature born of mothers twain by wondrous birthright and whose wilful tongue would work the navigator's ban and bane dwelt in a house the city folk among a form and vestment human who did feign to be a christian priest and here had raised a sumptuous altar where he prayed and praised there had he limned figuring aright the holy ghost's high heavenly portraiture hovered the dove in snowy plume bedight or the soul phoenix mary virgin pure the saintly company was shown to sight the dozen in that sore discomfiture as when taught only by the tongues that burned with lamb and fire men's very tongues they learned thither conducted either comrade went where hateful bacchus stood in lies arrayed and rose their spirits while their knees were bent before the god who sways the worlds he made the perfumed incense by Pancaya sent fuming its richest scent o daughter laid thyone's son and now they view forsooth the god of lies adore the god of truth here was received for kindly rest at night with every mode of good and trusty greeting the twain of christians who misweened the right than holy show of holy counterfeiting but soon as saul returning rain his light on sombre earth and in one instant fleeting forth from the ruddy-eyed horizon came the spouse titanian with her front aflame returned the moorman bearing from the land the royal license with the christian pair that disembarked by our chief's command for whom the king feigned honest friendship fair the portingal assured no plot was planned and seeing scanty fear of scathe or snare when christian peoples in the place abode to stem the salty river straightway stood advised him the scouts dispatch ashore that holy clerk and altars met their side and how received them the friendly moor while night's cloud shadow at mantle cloak delight nay that both lord and liege no feeling bore save what in kindness took a dear delight for certes nothing told of doubt or fear where proofs of friendship show it sure and clear whereon the noble gama hide to greet gladly the moors that up the bulwarks plied for lightly trusteth sprite without deceit and gallant souls in goodly show confide the crafty people on the flagship meet mooring their light canoes along her side merrily troop they all because they wot the wished-for prizes have become their lot the cautious warmen gathered on the land arms and munitions that whenever their maid ride at her anchors near the river in strand the work of boarding may be readier made with deepest treachery the traitors plan for those of lusses such an ambuscade that reckless of the coming doom they pay the blood that dating from mosambic bay weighed are the biting anchors rising slow while custom capstan songs and shouts resound only the foresails to the gale they throw as for the buoyant bar the ships are bound but erisina fair from every foe a glad to guard and guide her race renowned seeing the black ambush big with deadly bane flies from the welkin shaft swift to the main she musters nereus maidens fair and blonde with all the many of the sea blue race the water princess her commandment owned for the salt ocean was her natal place then 
told the reason why she sought the lawn with her whole bevy forth she set apart to stay the squadron ere it reached the bourne whence ne'er a traveller made to life return on on they hurry scattering high the spray and lash with silvern trains the spumy white doto's soft bosom breasts the briny way with hotter pressure than her wonted ply springs nise while nerine seeks the fray clearing the crystal wavelets nimble light the benin billows open wide the path fearing to rouse the hurrying nereus wrath borne on a trident's shoulders rides in state with fiery gesture dianea fair nor feels the bearer that delicious weight superb his cargo of such charms to bear now draw they nearer where stiff winds dilate the bellicose armada's sailing gear. They part, and sudden with their troops surround the lighter vessels in the wayward bound. Girt by her nymphs, the goddess lays her breast against the flagship's prow, and others close the harbor entrance, such their sudden guest, the breeze through bellied canvas vainly blows. With tender bosom to tough timber pressed, she drives the sturdy ship that sternward goes. Her circling myriads raise and urge afar the threatened victim from the hostile bar. E'en as to nasty homes the provident ants, their heavy portion burdens hailing slow, drill their small legions, hostile combatants, gainst hostile winter's war of frost and snow. There are their travails given to their wants, their puny bodies mighty spirits show. Not otherwise the nymphs from fatal end labor the Portugueses to defend. Their force prevails, a stern the flagship falleth, spite all aboard her raising fearful shout, boiling with rage the crew each yard arm hauleth to port, and starboard putting helm about, a poop the cunning master vainly bawleth, seeing that right the forn upon his rout uprears a sigurd rock its awful head, and present shipwreck fills his soul with dread. But as loud call and clamor gan uprise from the rude sailor toiling hard and keen, the moors are frighted by the news it cries, as though they sighted battle's horrid scene. None know the reason of such hot surprise, none know in similar press were on to lean. They hold their treacherous felon tricks are known, and present tortures must their crime atone. Lo, with a panic fear themselves they flung in the swift sailing barklets which they brought, these high uplifted on the billows hung, those deep in water diving safety sought. Sudden from starboard and from port they sprung, by dread of visionary sights distraught, for all would rather tempt the cruel tide, for none in mercies of their foes confide. Of such a fashion in the sylvan mere, the frogs, a brood of lichen blood belong, when fall of coming foot perchance they hear, while all incautious left their watery home, wake marish echoes hoping here and there to escape the perils threatening death and doom, and all ensconced in the well-known deep, not but their small black heads above water peep, so fly the moors, the loadsmen who alone the ships in deadly imminent risk had led, deeming his hateful plans to all benown, plunged in the bitter depths and swimming fled. But as her course had missed the steadfast stone, Where every hope of darling life were dead, Eftsoons our emerald doth her anchor throw, And near her furling sails the rest come too. Observant Gama seemed this sudden sight Of Moorish strangeness and surprise to view, His pilot flying with accusing flight, The vines, the plottings of that bestial crew. And when the hindrance showed near the might of tides That onwards bore, or winds that blew, yet that his flagship forged ahead no more, the marvel hailing thus he gan implore. O oh, chance, strange, passing strange, that gave no sign, O oh, wondrous godsend shone so clear, so plain, O oh, fellest treason, baffled, inopine, O oh, hostile panims, false, perfidious strain, who, of such desperate devilish design, by mortal wisdom could escape the bane, unless there thrown in heaven the sovereign guard, to weak humanity's strong aid award. Right well hath proved providence on high, the scanty safety by these ports pervade, right well appearance showeth every eye, 
how all our confidence hath been betrayed but since men's wit and wisdom vainly try to sound these feints and foils so deeply laid o thou o mighty guard to guard him deign who son thine aid himself would guard in vain and if thy holy ruth so condescend to save this people peregrine and poor who on thy grace and goodness sole depend to force salvation from the false fell moor vouchsafe o lord our weary course shall end at some fair harbour sheltered and secure or show the distant shores we pine to see since all this sailing is for serving thee the piteous prayer smote the loving ears of dionia fair her heart was pain she left her nymphs all bathed in yearning tears who by her sudden flight perplexed remain now she had thrid the luminous planet spheres now the third heaven's gateway she had gained on onward still to the sixth sphere the throne where high all father sits and reigns alone and as her way of fronting forth she hide her every gesture such a grace expired stars skies and ethers circumambient tide and all that saw her with love fire were fired those eyne wherein then cupid aid doth nigh such vital spirits in all life inspired the frigid poles with torrid ardors burned and spheres of arctic frost to flame were turned and with more love to move her sovereign sire who a loved her with a constant will herself she shows as to the trojan swain she showed of old on ida's bosky hill if her the hunter who the form of man lost seeing dian in the glassy rill had seen he ne'er had died by raving howl erst slain by a sorer and surer wound wandered the crispy threads of wavy gold adown a bosom shaming virgin snow her milk-hued breasts with every movement rolled where love lay sporting but did nowhere show flames with far flashing fire the zone's white fold wherewith the boy guard every heart to glow while round those columns polished curves were climbing desires like ivy parent trunk and twining a filmy sandal winds around her waist which delicate sense conceals by modest veiling and yet not all concealed nor all confessed the veil red blushing lilies oft revealing with warmer fondness still to flame his breast she woos his sight with secret charms assailing now all olympus shakes with jealous jars rage burneth vulcan love inflameth mars the while her angel semblance showeth blended with smiles a sadness in the sweetest way like some fair lady by rude swain offended in cautious rough while playing amorous play who laughs and laughing pouts with wrath pretended passing without and pause from grave to gay thus she the goddess who no rival heedeth softer than sad before her father pleadeth ay had i deemed mighty father mine in whatsoever my loving breast preferred to find thee kind and affable and benign even though of hostile heart the hate were stirred but as i see thine ire to me incline ire undeserved to thee i never have erred let bacchus triumph with his wicked will while in his wheel i sit and wail mine ill this folk these sons of me for whom i pour the tear that trickleth bootless for thy sight whose woe since wish them well i work the more when my good wishes but thy wrath excite for them i weep for them thine aid implore and thus in fine with adverse fate i fight but now because my love ill fortune bears i will to will them ill and will be theirs yet thus to perish by that wild beast race for i have been whereon all lovely flows the burning teardrop bedding down her face as pearled with rory dew fresh shines the rose silent a while as though her plea for grace the portals of her teeth list not disclose she had pursued but ere a word she said the potent thunderer further plain forbade and moved to pity by such gentle powers powers made to move the heart of tiger dure with beaming smile as when the sky that lowers waxeth serene and clears the lift obscure he dries his daughter's swelling tears and showers warm kisses on her cheeks and neck snow pure and mode that had the place been lear and lone a pair of cupids had olympus known and 
face approaching to the face he prized, where at the sobbing tears the faster flow, e'en as some inling by the nurse chastised weepeth cares with louder faint of woe. To soothe her troubled bosom he devised the future fortunes of her sons to show, unripping thus from fate's impregnate womb, he opes the mysteries of the things to come. Thou fairest daughter mine, throw far thy fear, lest to thy illusions happen harm in thine, nor deem my spirit holdeth aught so dear as the sad waters of this sovereign eye. Thou shalt behold, my daughter, hear me swear, the Greek and Roman dimmed of all his shine, by jests illustrious this thy hero race shall dare and do in eastern dwelling place. If glib Ulysses e'er to flee was fated, a lifelong slavery on Ogygia's shore, and if Antinor's fortune penetrated, illyric base to Mavis found explore, even if thy pious Aeneas navigated, where seas round Scylla and Charybdis roar, thy nobler science higher grade shall win, shall add new worlds to worlds of older men. Volverts and cities and the towering wall built by their valour, daughter, thou shalt see, shalt see the Turk deemed bravest brave of all, from their dread prowess forced aid to flee. Shalt see of in the free-born monarchs fall and own their mightier king's supremacy, and when, in fine, they wield the full command, shall dawn a higher law for every land. Him shalt thou see, who now in hurried flight fares distant Indus through such fears to find, make vast Neptune tremble with affright, and crisp his wavy waist some breath of wind. O oh, chance ne'er seen, O oh, wonder teeming sight, the squake of water with plaid calm combined, O oh, valiant race with loftiest thought and bread, whom earth's four elements must regard with dread, this land that water hath to them denied, shalt see affording surest height, where spent by their long voyaging shall rest and ride, Argus's bound from utmost Occident. In fine, this seaboard all, that futile try death's near to weave, shall pay obedient, tall tithe and tribute, knowing vain it were to beard the Lucian lion in his lair. Shalt see King Erythra's far-famed mane, permute his natural red to fierce pale dye. Eke shalt thou see the haughty Hormus reign, twice taken, prostrate in their presence lie. There shalt thou see the furious Mormon slain, pierced by his own deflected archery. Till all can clearly who thy sons oppose, by their own deed become their deadliest foes. Shalt see of dew the inexpugnable wall, two sieges braving, while thy sons defend. There shall their valour's worth be shown to all, with feats of arms that every feat transcend. Envy shall see in Mars majestical, of Lucian fierceness none shall dare offend. There shall they sight the moor with voice supreme, before high heaven falls Mahound blaspheme. Thou shalt see Goa from the Moslem tain, and in near future raised to queenly place, lady of orient land sublimely vain, of triumphs wrested by thy conquering race. There, with superb, high, haughtiest disdain, the gentle louting low to idols base, they bit and brittle, mastering every land that gainst thy Lusians raiseth head or hand. Thou shalt behold the fortless hold out of Cananor with scanty garnison, Calicut, Thou shalt see, endure sad rout, that erst so populous and puissant town, shalt in Cochin see one approved so stout, who such an arrogance of the sword hath shown. No harp of mortal sang a similar story, dying of everlasting name, eternal glory. There with such mars taught art and furious flame was Lucas seen in civil wars to glow. When to his action fight Augustus came, and laid the injurious Roman captain low, whom deft Aurora's reign and race to tame, far famed Nile and Bactra's civic foe, the spoiled, spite victorious spoils and rear, that fair Egyptian not so chaste as fair. As thou shalt see when ocean boileth over, with fires enkindled by thy Lucian's hate, 
who captive make the idle man and moor, and triumph high o'er many a subject state, till one rich Oria Kersonessus shore, far as far China they shall navigate, and each remotest isle of Orient hide, and every ocean in their rule shall bide. Tis thus, O daughter mine, thy children's lot, higher than human vigor to display, nowhere shall bravery burn and blaze so hot from Ganges bank to Gaditanian bay, nor from the boreal billows to the gut where first an injured Lucian break the way, even though their progress o'er the world to oppose, the dead of ages from their tombs arose. This said, he sendeth Maya's son divine to visit lowly earth, and there to seek some harbor's peaceful shelter with design that all the fleet shall ride some risk of wreck. And, lest in false Mombasa land and dine, more of delay the valiant captain make, tis Jove's command that be in vision shown a restful region free from restless foam. Now there is space the Silenian spanned, descending earth with feathery feet to tread. His hand was armed with the fatal wand, which sheds on weary eyes sweet drowsy head wherewith he called the sad-eyed shadowy band from Hades, and obedient breezes sped. The winged basnet on his head he bore, and thus he sought Melisoldanian shore. Fame is his mate, who mote aloud proclaim the Lusitanian's weight and rarest worth, for mortal breast is won by no name that makes the bearer loved of all on earth. Thus winning stranger hearts the herald came, and to the mighty brute gave timely birth. Anon desire Melinde burns to see what mode of man the valorous people be. Thence to Mombasa takes the god his course, where the strange vessels rode in fear afar, to bid the seamen leave, while none the worse those lands suspected in that treacherous bar. For scant availeth human fraud or force against infernals waging treacherous war. Scant baileth heart and art in judgment stayed, when human wisdom lacketh heavenly aid. Already night had passed her middle way, and all the starry host with alien light reigned on the breadth of earth the radiance gate, and now was sleep tired man's supreme delight. The lustrous captain, weary, wayworn, lay with careful watching through the cares of night. A short repose for anxious eye he snatched, the men on duty at their quarters watched. When, in a vision, Maya's son was seen, and heard to say, Fly, Lusitanian, fly, that wicked monarch snares, that only mean to draw you forwards where you surely die. Fly, for breathes fair the breeze and smiles serene either, while stormless sleep the seas and sky. In other part, another king more benign, sure sheltered offereth unto thee and thine. Here not thou findest but the barbarous right, the guest right dear to cruel Diomed, ill host that made each miserable wight the wonted forage of his stable steed, those altars which Bezeris in fame sprite taught with the stranger's wailing life to bleed. Here certes wait thee, and thou longer dwell, fly then, this folk perfidious, fierce and fell. Steer straight along this outstretched seaboard run, another land more leal shalt thou find. There, near the belt where the ever-blazing sun to day and night hath equal space assigned, there to thy squadron honor gladly done, a king with many a friendly service kind, the surest shelter shall for thee provide, and for your India skilful trusty guide. Mercury thus, and roused from his dreams, the captain rising in a stark dismay, while pierced the palpable obscure bright streams of sudden light and splendid holy ray, then, seen forthwith that him it best beseems, in land so vile to make the shortest stay, he bade his master, urged by spirit new, to spread the canvas in what breeze there blew. Hoist sail, he said, hoist high in liberal air, for God commands and heaven affects its friends. From yon clear seats was sent a messenger, only to speed our steps and shape our ends. Meanwhile, the sailors to set sail prepare, all work and either watch its anchor tends. The weighty irons with willing shouts are weighed, and sinewy strength the seamen's pride displayed. 
Now, at what time their anchors high uprose, lurking in night's murk shadows rose the moor, stealthy to cut the cables of his foes, that all might perish on the rocky shore. But watched with lynx-like glances, clear and close, the portingals prepared for every store, finding his victims wakeful, then me fled, by wings of terror, not by paddle, sped. But now the narrow sharp-cut drawers renew, cleaving the humid argent plain their road. Blandly the north and eastern trade wind blew, with gentle movement as in joyous mood. Past perils in their talk review the crew, for with a fond delay thought loves to brood on dangerous chances, when to death in life life comes so near she scarcely escapes the strife. One circle ended Phoebus all aglow, and on a second entered, when appeared in the far offing, sailing sure and slow, two hulls by gently breathing zephyrs steered, and as they must be manned by Moorish foe, our squadron veering soon her prizes neared. This one that feared fearful ills to brave, ran straight ashore her crew thereon to save. No similar cunning from such chances led her consort captive of the losing hen, which ne by rigorous mavers rage had bled, nor felt what furious Vulcan doth command, but weakly, mastered by a craven dread, the feeble forces which the barklet mend, resistance offered none, which happily shone, from such resisting greater ills had known. And as the Gama felt him much inclined to seek a guide for India land long sought, he thought a helmsman mid the moors to find, yet not to him succeeded as he thought. None mode gave tidings of the lay of Ind, under what tract of heaven it might be brought. But all declare a harbour lies hard by Melindy, ready pilots to supply. Her king's benevolence the Moorman praise, conditions liberal, breast no guile that knew, magnificent, grandiose, and gentle ways, with parts that won respect and honour true. All this to heart for fact our captain lays, since to his vision came such view to show the dream sent Silenian, thus he sped, whither the vision and the Moorman led. T'was the glad season, when the god of day into Europa's ravisher again returned, when warm at either point his genial ray and flora scattered Amalthea's horn. The hasty sun that girds the heavenly way brought round the memory of that blessed morn, when he, who ruleth all by will divine, upon creation stamped his seal and sign. At such a time the squadron neared the part where first Melinda's goodly shore was seen, in awnings dressed and pranked with gallant art, to show that none the holy day must ween flutter the flags the streaming estandard gleams from afar with gorgeous purple sheen tum-tums and timbrels mingle martial jar thus pass they forwards with the pomp of war men crowd and jostle on melindy's strand hasting to sight the strangers glad are made a folk more truthful far humane and bland than any mad on shores their course had made now rides the losing fleet anent the land her ponderous anchors now the depths invade, forthwith a captured moor they sent to greet the king, and manifest whence had come the fleet. The king, who well that noble lineage knew, which to the Portingal such worth imparts, prizeth their harboring at his height as due the praise to brave so prompt in martial arts, and, with a spirit ever pure and true, that nobleth generous souls and gallant hearts, he prays by proxy all forthwith may deign to land and use as best they choose his reign. Frank offers these, and made in honor bright, simple the words, undoubted, unprepared, wherewith the monarch greets each noble knight, who o'er such seas and lands so far hath fared. And eke he sendeth mutton's fleecy white, with many a cram domesticate pullard, and tropic fruitage which the markets fill, Yet his good gifts are given with better will. A glad and eager ear our captain lent, To him who spake his sovereign speech benign. Straightway of royal gifts return he sent, Stowed in his squadron for such fair design. Purple is scarlet, cloth of crimson tint, The branchy coral, highly prized and fine, Which in deep water, soft and tender grown, In air doth harden to a precious stone. Eke sends he one well known for courtly wit, who with the king may pact of peace conclude, 
and prayeth pardon that he could not quit his ships at once and leave the fleet of flood his trusty trunchman on the land alit and as before the monarch's face he stood spake thus in style which only pallas taught when praise and prayer firm persuasion wrought o king sublime to whom the olympus pure of his high justice gave the gifted boon to curb and conquer peoples dar and dure to win their love nor less their fear to own as save asylum heaven most secure to every oriental nation known thee have we come to seek in thee to find the surest medicine of she wanderer's mind no pirates we who fare on ports to pray and purse proud cities that in war be weak thieves who with fire and steel the people slay their robber greed on neighbor's goods to wreak from haughty europe to the realms of day we sail and earth's remotest verge we seek of in the great the rich for thus ordaineth the mighty monarch who our country reigneth what brood so harsh as this was ever bred what barbarous custom and what usage band that cannot only men from ports forbid but grudge the shelter of their desert sand what of ill-will hold they our hearts have hid that of a folk so few in fear they stand that traps for us they spread and ready snares and work their worst whereby we die unwares but thou wherein full surely we confide to find o king benign an honest man and hope such certain aid to see supplied as gave all sinners to the lost ithacan to this thy haven sure we stem the tide with the divine interpreter in van for as he sendeth us to thee tis clear thy heart must e'en be rare humane sincere and deem not thou o king that dreads to land our famous captain thee to serve and see for aught he sees of base or underhand or aught suspects of false and feigned in thee but know he acteth by the high command a law of all obeyed implicitly his king's own hest forbidding him to explore and from his squadron land at port or shore and since of subjects king may thus require for of the head should members heed the sway thou kingly office never shalt desire the liege his lord's command to disobey but the high benefits and those gifts still higher by thee bestowed he promised to repay with all that done by him or his can be long as the rolling rivers seek the sea thus he when all conjoint their voices raised while each to each his separate thoughts conveyed by the high stomach of the race amazed who through such seas and skies their way had made the illustrious king for loyalty bepraised the portingals the while his spirit weighed how high his value strong his orders are whose royal word is heard in land so far and with a smiling mien and pleased face he hailed the herald proffering high esteem all black suspicions from your bosoms chase nor let your souls with frigid terror teem such be your gallant worth your works of grace the world your deeds shall a most glorious deem and whoso holdeth right to do you wrong the truth the noble thoughts to him belong that all you warm and may not instant land observing custom and preeminence though surely grieved by your king's command yet much we prize so much obedience yet as your orders our desire withstand nor we consent to see such excellence of heart such loyalty of soul belie that our good wishes soul be gratified but as to-morrow's sun on earth shall shine all our flotilla shall make holiday to seek your sturdy fleet is our design we have so long to see full many a day and if your sea-tossed vessels bear the sign of angry tempests in their tedious way here they shall find in friendly form and guise pilots munitions vitel and supplies he spake and neath the serum sank to rest latona's son when home the herald hide with the fair message to the fleet addressed in a light canoe that fast outran the tide now joy and gladness filled every breast all had the perfect cure at length descried discovery of the land long wished for sight and thus they festivalled with glee the night aboard is foison of those artful rays whose splendors mock the tremulous hairy star 
now every bombardier his boast displays till ocean's thunder answers earth and air the cyclops art is shown in various ways in far stuff shells and burning bombs of war others with voices which invade the skies make brazen notes from blaring trumps arise echoes a loud reply the ready shore with buzzing fireworks form in giddy gyre while burning wheels that far in either soar sulphurous dust deep hid explodes in fire heaven high resounds the multitudinous roar the soft blue waters dawn flames red attire nor blazeth land the less tis thus friends greet their friends as foemen who in battle meet again the restless fears revolving sped to olden drudgery dooming men anew again did memnon's mother radiance shed and from the sluggard's eye soft sleep withdrew the latest shadow slowly melting fled on earthly floret sweeping frigid dew when the melindan king took boat that he might view the squad that swam the blackmoor sea boiling about him swarming round the bay dense crowds glad gathered and enjoyed the sight captains of finest purple glisten gay glanced splendid robes with silken tissue dye in lie of warrior lands and hersegay in bow whose burnished cusps mock luna's light aloft the revellers bear the palmy bough the fittest crown that decks the conqueror's brow a spacious stately barge or canopied with dainty silks of divers tainture stain beareth melinda's king accompanied by lords and captains of the land he reigned rich clad he cometh with what pomp and pride his country customs and his tastes ordain a precious turban winds around his head of cotton wrought with gold and silken thread captain of costly texture damascene the tyrian collar honored there of eld torque round his collar shining golden sheen whose wealth of work its wealth of ore excelled glitters and gleams with radiance to diamantine dog targe of costly price by girdle held and show in fine upon his saddle shoon velvets with seed pearl and gold spangles strewn with silken sunshade high and round of guise fast to its handle bound a gilded spear a minister the solar ray defies lest hurt of baleful beam the high king bear high in the poop his strange glad music highs of asperous noise most horrible to the ear of arched trumpets writhed in curious round roaring a rough rude unconcerted sound nor with less garnishment are lusitanian swift sailing galleys from the squadron bore to meet and greet the noble melindanian begirt by goodly company glore the gama cometh dyed in dress hispanian but of french work the doublet was he wore satin which adrian venice works and stains crimson a collar which such prize obtains buttons of gold his lupid sleeves confine where solar glancings dazzle gazing eyes hosen of soldier fashion purfled shine with the rich metal fortune oft denies points of the same the slashes deftly join gored in his doublet with right delicate ties gold hilted sword in mould of italy plume in his bonnet worn a little wry in the suit and escort of the captain showed of the dye murex tires surpassing tint the various shades that joyed men's eye and mode of dress devised with fashion different such was the enamel and as bright it glowed with cunning colours in quaint mixture blent as though her rutland bow had reared in air the maid of thomas fairest of the fair sonorous trumpets manly breasts in sight gladding the heart with martial music gay churned the moorish kills blue waters wide and awning spread with dews of pearly spray the horrid sounding bombards thunder fright while smoky hangings veil the splendid day roar the hot volleys hurtling sound so loud fain close with hands their ears the moorish crowd and now the king or captain's galley sought who strained in his arms the welcome guest he with the courtesy which reason taught his host who was of royal rank addressed noted the admiring moor with marvel fraught his visitors every mode and look and jest as one regarding with a huge esteem folk who so far in quest of india came 
and to him proffers in his phrase high-flown whatever goods his realm and heaven boast, the while commanding him to hold his own what store might haply serve his turn the most. Eke he assures him fame had made well known the Lusian name ere Lusians reached his coast, for long t'was rumoured that in realms afar it had with peoples of his law waged war. How every continent's farthest shores resound, he told him, with great deeds the warmen did, whose long campaigns the conquerors had crowned, lords of the lands where dwelt the Hesperid. With long harangue he taught the crowd around the least deserts the Lusians merited, and yet the most that fame was fain to teach when thus da Gama to the king made speech. O thou, whose soul hast seen with pitiful eye benignant king or Lusitanian race, which in such misery dire hath dared defy fate and the furies of mad seas to face, may yon divine eternity on high that ruleth man revolve in sky a space, since gifts so goodly givest thou, I pray, the heavens repay thee what we never may. Of all Apollo bronzed hath thou so peaceful didst greet us from the abysmal sea. To thee from Aeolus winds that moan and howl we find good, truthful, glad security. Long as its stars leads forth the vasty pole, long as the sun shall light the days to be, wherever I haply live with fame and glory, shall live thy praises in my people's story. He spake, and straight the barges gin to row, whither the moormen would review the fleet. Rounding the vessels, one by one they go, that every notable thing his glance may meet. But Vulcan, skywards volleying horrible low, with dire artillery hastes the guest to greet, while trumpets, loud canoras, accents bland, with shawms the Moorish hosts their answer send. When due attention to the sights had lent, the generous Moslem, filled with thrilling wonder, and hearing eke the unwanted instrument that told its dreadful might in fiery thunder, he bade the light battel wherein he went at anchor quiet ride the flagship under, that with the doughty gama he might hold converse of matters urged by rumour told. The moor in very dialogue took delight, and now he prayed the visitor would expound each war-renowned and famous feat of fight fought with the races that adore Mahound. Now of the peoples he would gain a sight that hold our ultimate Hispanian ground, then of the nations who with us confine, then of the mighty voyage o'er the brine. But first, O valiant captain, first relate, quoth he, with all the diligence thou can, what lands and climes compose your natal state, and where your home, recount with regular plan, nor less your ancient lineage long and great, and how your kingdom's lofty rule began with all your early deeds of during do, in now, though known them not, their worth we know. And pry thee further, say how o'er the main, long on this voyage through fierce seas you strayed, seeing the barbarous ways of alien strain, which our rude Afric land to you displayed. Begin, for now the team with golden rain draws near, and drags the nuisance car inlaid with marquetry from cold aurora skies, sleep wind and water, smooth the wavelet lies and as the occasion such a fitness showeth so is our wish your wondrous tale to hear who dwells among us but by rumour knoweth the lusitanians labour singular deem not so far from us removed gloweth resplendent soul that need thy judgment fear to find melinda nurse so rude a breed which can ne prize ne praise a noble deed vainly the haughty olden giants vied by war to win olympus clear and pure Pyrrhus and Theseus, mad with ignorance, tried of Pluto's realm to burst the dread obscure. If in the world such works hath worked pride, not less tis labor excellent and dure, bold as it was to brave both heaven and hell, for a man or rage in Nereus to prevail. With fire consumed Dian's sacred fane, that masterpiece of subtle Tesiphon, Herostratus, who by such deed would gain of world-wide fame the high immortal boon, if greed of foolish praise and glory vain to action so perverse may urge man on, more reason tis to crown with endless fame deeds that deserve by God's a deathless name. End of Canto 2
Canto three of the Lusiads. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Lenny. The Lusiads by Luis Vaz de Camões, translated by Sir Richard Francis Burton. Canto three. Argument of the third canto. The talk of Vasco da Gama with the king of Melindi, wherein he describeth Europe and recounteth the origin of the kingdom of Portugal, its kings, including the king Don Fernando, and its principal achievements, the notable feat of Egais Muniz, the queen of Castile, Dona Maria, visiteth Portugal to crave aid for the battle of the Salado, the loves and luckless fate of Dona Inês de Castro, some events which befell the king Don Fernando. Another Argument a populosa Europa se descreve, de Gás Muniz o feito sublimado, Lusitânia, que reis, que guerras teve. Cristo a Afonso se expõe crucificado, de Dona Inês de Castro a pura neve em púrpura converte o povo irado. Mostra-se o vil descuido de Fernando e o grão poder de um gesto suave e brando. Populous era passeth in review, e Gás Muniz is praised for famous feat. What kings and wars are Lusitania knew? Afonso sees the Christ on cross elate. Agnes de Castro's breast of snowy hue, with innocent blood and purple the popular hate. Fernando's vile neglect is shown to shame, and the high powers that youth and beauty claim. Canto three. Now my Calliope, to teach incline, what speech great Gama for the king did frame. Inspire immortal song, grant voice divine, unto this mortal who so loves thy name. Thus may the god whose gift was medicine, to whom thou bearest Orpheus, lovely dame, never for Daphne, Clitia, Leucatoe, do love deny thee, or inconstant grow he. Satisfy, nymph, desires that in me teem, to sing the merits of thy Lusians brave, so worlds shall see and say that Tagus stream rolls Aganippus liquor. Leave, I crave, leave flowery Pindus head, in now I deem Apollo bates me in that sovereign wave. Else must I hold it that thy gentle sprite fears thy dear Orpheus fade through me from sight. All stood with open ears in long array to hear what mighty Gama mote unfold, when Passed in thoughtful mood a brief delay, began he thus, with brow high raised and bold. Thou biddest me, O king, to say my say, anent our grand genealogy of old. Thou bidst me not relate an alien story, thou bidst me loud my brother Lucian's glory. That one praise other's exploits and renown is honored custom which we all desire. Yet fear I tis unfit to praise mine own, lest praise, like this suspect, no trust inspire. Nor may I hope to make all matters known, for time, however long, were short. Yet, sire, as thou commendest, all is owed to thee. Maugre my will I speak, and brief will be. Nay, more, what most obligeth me in fine, is that no leason in my tale may dwell. For of such feats, whatever boast be mine, when most is told, remaineth much to tell. But that do order wait on the design, in as desirest thou to learn full well. The widespread continent first I'll briefly trace, then the fierce bloody wars that waged my race. Atwixt the zone where cancer holds command, the lucent sun septentrional meet, and that whose frigid horrors freeze the land, as burns the middle belt with fervid heat, lies haughty Europe, on her goodly strand, facing Arcturus and the opponent beat the briny billows of Atlantis' plain, while free towards Ulster flows the midland main. That part where lovely dawn is born and bred, neighboreth Asia, but the curved river, from far and fro Rhypean ranges shed, to feed Maeotis lake with waves that shiver, departs them, and the sea straight fierce and dread that own the victory of the Greek deceiver, where now the seamen sees along the shore triumphant Troy's memories and no more. 
there further still the boreal pole below, Hyperborean mountain walls appear, and the wild hills where Aeolus loves to blow, while of his winds the names they proudly bear. Here such cold comfort doth Apollo show, so weak his light and warmth to shine and cheer, that snow's eternal gleam upon the mountains, freezes the sea and ever freeze the fountains. Here of the Scythic hordes vast numbers be, in olden day a mighty warrior band, who fought for honors of antiquity with the then owners of the Nihilus land. But how remote their claims from verity, for human judgments oft misunderstand. Let him who seeks what higher lore revealed ask the red clay that clothes Damascus' field. Now, in these wild and wayward parts be told cold Lapland's name, uncultivate Norway. A Scandinavia's isle, whose science bold boast triumphs Italy shall ne'er gainsay. Here, while ne frost, ne wintry rigorous hold in hand the waters, sea folk ply the way. Over the arm of rough Sarmatic main, the Swede, the Brugian, and the shivering Dane. Between the sea and Tennis stream we count strange races, Ruthans, Moscows, and Livonians, Sarmate all of old, and on the Mount Hercinian, Marco many, now Polonians. Holding the empire Elmain paramount, dwell Saxons and Bohemians and Pannonians, and other tribes where through their currents floor Rhine, Danube, Amasis, and Albis poor. Twixt distant Ister and the famous strait, where hapless Halle left her name and life, the Thracians won, a folk of brave estate, Mars' well-loved country, chosen home of strife, their Rodopi and Hemus rue the weight of cursed Othman's rule with horror rife. Byzance they hold beneath their yoke and dying, great injury working to great Constantine. Hard by their side the Macedonians rest, whose soil is watered by cold Axius' wave. Ikie, of every choicest realm the best, lands of the free, the wise, the good, the brave, that here did breed and bear the fecund breast, and to the world its wit and wisdom gave, wherewith thou, noble Greece, hast reached the stars, no less by arts exalt than arms and wars. The Delmets follow, and upon the bay, where rose Antenor's walls in wild of yore, superb Venetia builds on watery way, Adria's queen that erst was lowly poor. Hence seawards runs a land arm made to sway, forceful the sons of many a stranger shore, an arm of might, whose race hath conquered time, nor less by spirit than by sword sublime. Girdeth her shores the kingdom Neptunine, while nature's bulwarks fence her landward side, her middle width departeth Apennine by Mars, her saint and patron glorified. But when the porter rose to rank divine, she lost her prowess and her bellic pride. Humbled she lies, with antique puissance spent, so man's humility may his god content. Gallia can there be seen, whose name hath flown, where Caesar's triumphs to the world are towed. By Sequina tis watered and the road, by Rhine's deep current and Garumna code. Here rise the rains from Pyrene known, the nymph and sepulchred in days of old, whence, legends say, the conflagrated woods rolled golden streams and flowed silvern floods. Lo, here her presence showeth noble Spain, of Europe's body corporal the head, or whose home rule in glorious foreign reign the fatal wheel so many a world hath made. Yet ne'er her past her force or fraud shall stain, nor restless fortune shall her name degrade. No bonds her bellic offspring bind so tight but it shall burst them with its force of sprite. There, facing Tingitania's shore, she seemed to block and bar the Mediterranean wave, where the known strait its name and noble deemeth by the last labor of the Theban brave. Big with the burden of her tribes she teemeth, circled by whelming waves that rage and rave, all noble races of such valiant breast, that each may justly boast itself the best. Hers the Tarragonese, who famed in war, made a perturbed Parthenope obey. The twain Asturias and the hot Navarre 
twin Christian bulwarks on the Moslem way, hers the Gallego canny and the rare Castilian, whom his star raised high to sway, Spain as her savior, and his seigneury feel, Betis, Leon, Granada, and Castile. See the head-crowning coronet is she, of general Europe, Lusitania's reign, where endeth land and where beginneth sea, and Phoebus sinks to rest upon the main. Willed her the heavens with all just decree, by wars to mar the noble Moritan, to cast him from herself, nor their consent he rule in peace the fiery continent. This is my happy land, my home, my pride, where, if the heavens but grant the prayer I pray, for glad return and every risk defied, there may my life light fail and fade away. This was the Lusitania, name applied by Lucius or by Lisa, sons, they say, of ancient Bacchus, or his boon compeers, eke the first dwellers of her eldest years. Here sprang the shepherd, in whose name we see, forecast of virile might, of virtuous meed, whose fame no force shall ever hold in fee, since fame of mighty Rome ne'er did the deed. This, by light heaven's volatile decree, that ancient Scyther, who devours his seed, make puissance power in many a part to claim, assuming regal rank, and thus it came. A king there was in Spain, Afonso Hyde, who waged such warfare with the Saracen, that by his sanguine arms and arts and might he spoiled the lands and lives of many men. When from Herculean Culp he winged her flight, his fame to Caucasus Mount and Caspian Glen, many a knight, whom noblest coveteth, comes offering service to such king and death. And with intrinsic love and flame and more, for the true faith that honors popular, they troop it gathering from each distant shore, leaving their dear-loved homes and lands afar. When, with high feats of force against the moor, they proved of singular worth in holy war, will it Afonso that their mighty deeds, commensurate gifts command and equal needs. Mid them and Hiki, second son, men say, of a Hungarian king, well known and tried, by sword won Portugal, which, in his day, Ne prized was, ne had fit cause for pride. His strong affection, stronger to display, The Spanish king decreed a princely bride, His only child, Theresa, to the count, And with her made him singer paramount. This doughty vassal from that servile horde, Hagar, the handmaid seed, great victories won, Reft the broad lands adjacent with his sword, And did whatever bravery bade be done. Him, for his exploits excellent to reward, God gave, in shortest space, a gallant son, whose arm to noble and fame was fain, the warlike name of Lusitania's reign. Once more at home this conquering Henry stood, whose sacred hero Solima had relieved, his eyes had fed on Jordan's holy flood, which the dear body of Lord God had laved. When Godfrey left no foe to be subdued, and all Judea conquered was and saved, many that in his wars had done devour, to their own lordships took the way once more. But when this stout and gallant Hun attained life's fatal period, age and travail spent, he gave, by death's necessity constrained, his sprite to him who had that spirit lent. A son of tender years alone remained, to whom the sire bequeathed his bodiment. With bravest braves the youth was formed to cope, for from such sire, such son, the world may hope. Yet, old report, I know not what its weight, for on such antique tale no man relies, saith that the mother, tain in told estate, a second nuptial bed did not despise. Her orphan son to disinherited fate she doomed, declaring hers the dignities, not his, with seigneury o'er all the land, her spousal dowry by her sire's command. Now Prince Afonso, who such style had ta'en in pious memory of his grandsire's name, seeing no part and portion in his reign, all piled and plundered by the spouse and dame, by dar and doughty Mars in flame domain, privately plots his heritage to claim. He weighs the causes in his own conceit, till firm resolve its fit effect shall greet. 
of Guimarães the field already flowed with floods of civil warfare's bloody tide, where she, who little of the mother showed, to her own bowels love and land denied, fronting the child in fight the parent stood, nor saw her depths of sin that soul of pride against her God, against maternal love, her sensual passion rose all par above. O magical Medea, O prognid dire, if your own babes in vengeance dared ye kill for alien crimes and injuries of the sire, look ye, Theresa's deed was darker still. Foul greed of gain, incontinent desire, were the main causes of such bitter ill. Scylla, her aged sire, for one did slay, for both Theresa did her son betray. Right soon that noble prince clear victory won from his harsh mother and her fear and dine. In briefest time the land obeyed the son, though first to fight him did the folk incline. But reft of reason and by rage undone, he bound the mother in the biting chain. Eftsoons avenged her griefs the hand of God. Such veneration is to parents owed. Lo, the superb Castilian gins prepare his power to venge Teresa's injuries against the Lucian land in man so rare, whereon ne toil ne trouble heavy lies. Their breasts the cruel battle grandly dare aid the good cause angelic potencies. Unwrecking might unequal still they strive, nay, more, their dreadful foe to flight they drive. Passeth no tedious time before the great prince dure siege in Guimarães dread, by passing power, for to men his state came the fell enemy full of grief and greed. But when committed life to direful fate, Egash, the faithful guardian, he was freed, who had in any other way been lost, all unprepared against such whelming host. But when the loyal vessel well hath known how weak his monarch's arm to front such fight, said order wending to the Spanish foam, his sovereign's homage he doth pledge and plight. Straight from the horrid siege the invader flown, trusteth the word and honor of the knight, Egas Munish, but now the noble breast of the brave youth disdaineth strange behest. Already came the plighted time and tide, when the Castilian dawn stood die to see, before his power the prince bent low his pride, yielding the promised obediency. Egas, who views his knightly word belied, while still Castile believes him true to be, sweet life resolveth to the winds to throw, nor live with foulest taint of faithless vow. He with his children and his wife departeth to keep his promise with a faith immense, unshod and stripped, while their plight imparteth far more of pity than of vengeance. If, mighty monarch, still thy spirit smarteth to wreak revenge on my rash confidence, Quoth he, Behold, I come with life to save my pledge, my knightly honor's word I gave. I bring, thou seest here, lives innocent, of wife, of sinless children died to die, if breasts of generous mold and excellent accept such weakling's woeful destiny. Thou seest these hands, this tongue inconsequent, Hereon alone the fierce experiment try of torments, death, and doom that pass in full, sinis or e'en perilous brazen bull. As shrifted white the hangman stands before, in life still draining bitter draught of death, lace, throat on block, and of all hope for lore, expects the blighting blow with bated breath. So, in the prince's presence, angry sore, Egaish stood firm to keep his plighted faith, when the king, marveling at such wondrous truth, feels anger melt and merge in royal ruth. O oh, the great Portingal fidelity, a vassal self-devote to doom so dread! What did the Persian more for loyalty, whose gallant hand his face and nostrils shred? When great Darius mourned so grievously, that he a thousand times deep sighing said, Far he preferred his sovereign sound again, than lord of twenty Babylons to reign. But Prince Afonso now prepared his band of happy Lucians proud to front the foes, those haughty moors that held the glorious land, yon side where clear delicious Tagus flows. 
Now on Uriki Field was pitched and planned the royal campment, fierce and bellicose, facing the hostile host of Saracen, though there are so many, here so few there been. Confident, yet would he not confide, save in his God that holds of heaven the throne. So few baptized stood their king beside, there were a hundred moors for every one. Judge any sober judgment and decide, twas deed of rashness or by bravery done, to fall on forces whose exceeding might a sentry showed to a single knight. Order five Moorish kings the hostile host, of whom Ishmah so called commandeth claim, all of long warfare, large experience boast, wherein may mortals win immortal fame. And gallant dames, the knights they love the most, company like that brave and beauteous dame, who to beleaguered Troy such aidance gave, with woman troops that drained their modern's wave. The cool serene and early morning pride now pale the sparkling stars about the pole, when Mary's son, appearing crucified in vision, strengthened King Afonso's soul. But he, adoring such appearance, cried, fired with a frenzied faith beyond control, To the infidel, O Lord, to the infidel, not, Lord, to me, who know thy power so well. Such gracious marvel, in such manner sent, flamed delusions, spirits fierce and high, towards their natural king, that excellent prince, unto whom love boon none could deny. Aligned to front the foeman prepotent, they shouted resonant slogan to the sky, and fierce the lauren rose, Real, real, for high Afonso, king of Portugal. As to the fight by calls the fight and cries, some fierce molosan on the wooded height attacks the rampant bull, who most relies on strength of timorous horn to force the fight. Now nips the ear, then at the side he flies, barking with more of nimbleness than might, till ripped at last the gullet of his foe, he lays the mighty bulk of monster low. So the new king, inflamed with zeal devout, for God, nor less for faithful liege's sake, assails by cunning skill the barbarous rout, with braves the fronting phalanx, eath to break. Whereat the bandogs, Allah, Allah, shout, and fly to arms. Our raging warriors shake the lance and bow, resound the trumpet tones, the music thunders, echo moans and groans. E'en as the prairie fire enkindled on, sun parched step, and winnoweth upper air, sibilant boreas, by the blast swift blown, or bush and arid brake rains flame and flare. The shepherds, lads, and lasses, idly strown in rest and gentle slumber, waked by blare of crackling conflagration blazing higher, hamlet wars force their flocks to fly the fire. The stunning moorman in such startled guise snatcheth his weapon hastily and some heed. Yet he awaits the fight, nor even flies, nay, spurs his battle guinnet to its speed. Meet him as rash and swift his enemies, whose piercing lances gar his bosom bleed. These fall half slain, while others flee that can, convoking Aidens of their Alcaran. There may be viewed counters madly rash, on sets no Serra's sturdy strength could stand, while charging here and there the chargers dash, the gifts of Neptune smiting gravid land. Buffets they deal, and blows that bash and smash, burneth and blazeth warfare's blasting brand. But he of Lysus, coat, mail, plate of steel, hacks, hews, breaks, batters, rives, and rends piecemeal. Men's heads like bullets dance the bloody plain, ownerless arms and legs insensible lie, and quivering entrails tell of mortal pain, and faces fade, and life's fair colors fly. Lost is that impious host, whose heaped slain roll o'er the greenery rills of crimson dye, whereby the grasses lose their white and green, and naught but glow of crimson gore is seen. But now the lucent victor held the field, his trophies gathering and his gorgeous prey. The crush to his Spanian moor was forced to yield, while on the plain three days the great king lay. And now he chargeth on his virgin shield what still assures the well-won victory, five noble Innes kitchens azure-hued, 
signing the Moorish five his sword subdued. He paints with peasants five each scutcheon, the thirty silvers wherewith God was sold, and various tinctures make his memory known, whose grace and favor did his cause uphold. Painted on every sunk a sunk is shown, and, that the thirty may be fully told, counteth for two the one that central lies, of the five azures painted crossy wise. Some time has passed since this gain had passed of goodly battle, when the high king hies to take Lyria, lately tain, and last conquest that boast are conquered enemies. Herewith a raunches, castle strong and fast, is jointly gained with the noble prize, Scalaby Castro, whose fair fields a mean, thou, Crystal Tagus, bathest all serene. Unto this conquered roll of towns his smite eke addeth Mafra, one in shortest space, and in the mountains which the moon hath hide, he clasps Fror Sintra to his hard embrace. Sintra, whose naiads love to hide their light by hidden founts and fly the honeyed lace, which love hath woven mid the hills where flow the waters flaming with a living low. And thou, O noble Lisbon, thou and crowned princess-elect of city's capital, reared by the fecund rover king renowned, whose wiles laid low Dardania's burning wall, thou, whose commands obliged the seas profound, wast taught to bear the Lusitanian's thrall, aided by potent navies at what time they came crusading from the boreal clime. Beyond Germanic Albis and the Rhine, and from Britannia's misty margins sent to waste and slay the people Saracen, many had sailed on holy thoughts intent. Now gained the Tagus mouth our stream amin, to great Afonso's royal camp they went, whose lofty fame did thence the heavens invade, and siege to Ulysses' walls they laid. Five sequent times her front had Luna veiled, five times her lovely face in full had shone, when oped her gate the city, which availed no force against sieging forces round her throne. Right bloody was the assault, and fierce the sailed, in as their stubborn purpose bound them down. Aspris the victor, ready all to dare, the vanquished victims of a dire despair. Thus won she yielded, and in fine she lay prostrate that city, which, in days of old, the mighty Mani never would obey, of frigid Scythia's hordes immanely bold, who could so far extend their savage sway, till Ebro sought and Tagus trembling rolled, and some o'er Betty's land, in short, so swept, that was the region Vendalia clapped. What might of city could perchance endure prowess which proud Lishboa might not bear? Who mote resist the powers dure and dour of men whose fame from earth invadeth air? Now yield obedience all extremadure, Obidus, Torres Vedras, Alenquer, where softly plash the music murmuring waves mid rocks and reefs whose feet the torrent laves. Ike, transtagon lands, ye justly vain, a flavor serious bean and bonny boon, yielded to might above the might of men the walls and castles by his valor won. Thou too, moor yeoman, hopest hope insane, those riant regions long as lord to own, for Elvas, Moura, Serpa, well-known sites, with Alcácer do Sal must yield their rights. The noble city and sure seat behold, held by Sertorius, rebel fame belong, where now the knitted silvery waters cold brought from afar to bless the land and home, or flow the royal arches hundredfold, whose noble sequence streaks the dark blue dome. Not less succumbed she to her bold pursuer, to Giraldo, entitled Knight Samper. Fast towards Beja city, vengeful pressed, to slake his wrath for spoiled Trancoso's wrong, Afonso, who despiseth gentle rest, and would brief human life by fame prolong, feebly resisteth him in his behest the city, falling to his arms ere long, and not of life within her walls but feel the raging victor's edge of merciless steel. With these, Palmela yielded to the war, Pisca Sesimbra eke her finest spoils, 
then aided onwards by his fortunate star the king a powerful force of foemen foils felt it the city sought her lord afar who to support and aid her spares no toils along the hill skirt marching all unware of rash encounter lacked he heed and care the king of badajoz was a moslem bold with horse four thousand fierce and furious knights and countless peons armed and dyed with gold whose polished surface glanceth lustrous light but as a savage bull on lonely wold whom jealous rage in hot may month incites citing a stranger mad with love and wrath the brute blind lover chargeth down the path so doth afonso sudden seen the foes that urge their forward march securely brave strike slay and scatter raining doughty blows flies the moor king who wrecks but self to save naught save a panic fear his spirit knows his followers seek to follow only crave while ours who struck a stroke so sore so fell where sixty horsemen told in fullest tale victory swift pursuing rest disdaineth the great untiring king he mustereth all the lieges of his land whom naught restraineth from ever seeking stranger realms to throw he went to leaguer badajoz where he gaineth his soul's desire and battleth at her fall with force so fierce and art and heart so true his deeds made others fain to dare and do but the high godhead who when man offends so long deserved penalties delays waiting at times to see him make amends or for deep mystery hid from men's dull gaze if he our valiant king till now defends from dangers face it fast as foes can raise lends aid no longer when for vengeance cries the mother's curses who in prison lies for in the city which he compassed round encompassed by the leonese was he because his conquests trespassed on their ground which of leon and not of portugal be here was his stubborn will right costly found as happeth oft in human history an iron maims his legs as rage inflamed to fight he flies and falls a captive maimed o famous pompey feel thy wraith no pain to see the fate of noble feats like thine nor mourn if all just nemesis ordain thy base be torn by siren law and thine though phases froar and part siena plain whose perpendicular shadows ne'er decline boots icebergs and equator fires confess the terror which thy name inspires though rich arabia and the brute ferocious heniox will calk his region known of yore for golden fleece and though the cappadoces and judeans who one only god adore though softs of phoenix and the race atrocious cilician with armenia whence all poor the twain of mighty streams whose farthest fount hides in a higher and a holier mount and though in fine from far atlantic tide into the taurus cytheus towering wall all saw thee conquer fearless still abide if none save emeth field beheld thee fall thy shalt behold afonso's oven pride lie subjugate that subjugated all such fate celestial counsel long foresaw thine from a sire his from a son-in-law return the king sublime in fine with sprite by the just doom of judge divine chastised and when of santarém in pride of might the saracen a bootless siege devised and when of vincent martyr benedai the precious course by christian people prized from sacrum promontorium was conveyed and reverent wise in ulyssea laid faster to push the project still in hand the toil-spent father sent his stout young son bidding him pass to alentejo's land with warlike gear and soldiers many a one sancho a sovereign wielder of the brand straight forward passing gore red guards to run the stream whose waters feed seville and flood died by the brutish moorman's barbarous blood with hunger wetted by this new success now resteth not the youth till sight his eyes another slaughter sore as this oppress the barbarous host that circling beja lies 
Not long the prince, whom fortune loves to bless, waits the fair end where leads his dear in prize. But now the routed moors to vengeance cleave, their only hope such losses to retrieve. They crowd the mighty mount whereof Medus robbed his body who the skies abhorred. They flock in thousands from Cape Ampelus and from Tanger and Tia's seat of yore. A bilious dweller offereth scant excuse, who with his weapon hasteth him the more, when heard the Moorish clarion shrilly toned, and all the rain high Juba Willem owned. The Mir al Muminin, who led the throng from the dark continent past to Portugal, thirteen Moor kings he led, high, hot, and strong, to his imperial sceptre subject all. Thus wrecking forceful every tyrant wrong, wherever easy wrong mote state his gall. Sancho in Santarém he flies to invest, yet his was hardly of success the best. Gives Osprey's battle, fighting fury fraught, the hateful moor a thousand feints designing. Ne horrid catapult avails him aught, ne forceful battering ram, ne hidden mining. Afonso's son, conserving force and thought and firm resolve with warlike skill combining, foreseeth all with prudent heart and art, and stern resistance brings to every part. But now the veteran, doomed by ears to ease and gentle rest from life of toil and teen, being the city, down whose pasture lease Mondego's wavelets kiss the hem of green, when learned how fast his son beleaguered is in Santarém by moormen blind with spleen, fast from the city flies the foam to meet, age idless spurning with fast eager feet. He heads his army, tried in war and known, his son to succor, and his well-led host shows wanted Portingal fury all their own, till, in brief time, the moor is broken lost. The battle plain, whose blood-stained front is strewn with steely coats and caps of varied cost, horse, charger, harness, rich and worthy prize, heaped with their owner's mangled corpses lie. Forth fares the remnant of the Painimri from Lusitania, hurled in headlong flight, but Mir al Muminin may never flee, for ere he flee his life hath fled the light. To him, whose arm vouchsafed such victory, in praise and stintless prayer our hosts unite. Chances so passing strange may clear to ken, God's arms smite sorer than all arms of men. Such crown of conquest still bedecked the brow of old Afonso, lord of lofty fame, when he, in fine, Whoever foiled his foe was foiled by ancient times unyielding claim. Passed the death sickness o'er his pallid brow its frigid hand, and wrung his feeble frame. And thus the debt on mortal shoulders laid, his years to gloomy Libertina paid. His loss the lofty promontories mourn, and from the wavy rivers floods of grief with lakelets overspread the fielded corn and trickling tears are sorrow's sole relief. But ring so loud o'er earth's extremest born the fame and exploits of our great lost chief that evermore shall echo for his reign Afonso, Afonso, cry and cry in vain. Sancho, his lusty son, the worthy heir of his great father's valour, force and might, as did his early doings clear declare, when Betis fled in sanguine from the fight, and from Andalusia forced the fair, the barbarous king and people Ishmaelite, and more, when they who vainly Beja gird of his shrewd blows themselves had borne the herd, after he had been raised to royal hest, and held for years a few his father's land, he went the city's silvers to invest, ploughed whose plain the barbarous peasant's hand, with allies valorous was his daring blessed, the sturdy Germans, whose armada mend, by furnished host, was flying o'er the wave, the lost Judea to regain and save. To join in holy enterprise they went, Red Frederick, who did first to move begin, his mighty armament and succor sent, toward the town where Christ had died for men. And Guy, whose crossers were by thirst bespent, yielded his sword to gallant Saladin. There, where the Moslem host was well supplied with what restore to those of Guy denied. 
but that majestical armade that came by dint of stormwin or the lisbon bar would aid our sancho the foul foe to tame all being bounden for the holy war as to his father hap to him the same and lisbon fell to fortune similar aided by german sylves town he takes and the fierce dwellers slaves or subject makes and if so many trophies from a hound his valor snatched eke denies his pride the leonese in peace to till their ground whom mart with martial usage loved to guide till on the bended neck his yoke he bound of haughty tui and all its countryside where many a city felt the dreaded blow which with thine arms thou sancho broughtest low but mid his many palms the prince waylaid the stroke of timorous death his heir preferred was that esteemed son whom all obeyed second afonso of our kings the third he reigning alcacer do sal was made ours snatched for ever from the moorish herd that erst was taken by the moor beset and now perforce he pays of death the dead afonso dying straight to him succeedeth a second sancho easy-going soul who in his weakling idless so exceedeth the ruled rule their ruler and their tool he lost the reign for which another pleadeth by private preference the private of rule since governed only by his minions will he made him partner in their works of ill yet ne'er was sancho no such profligate past as was that nero wedded with a boy who in foul incest showing horrid zest his mother agrippina dared enjoy ne'er with strange cruel arts did he molest the liege nor guard the torch his town destroy he was no waster no heliogabalus no woman king like soft sardana palace ne'er was his tyrannized people so chastised as wretched sicil by her tyrant bane ne'er like the despot phalaris he devised novel inventions for inhuman pain but his high-hearted realm which ever prized lords of the highest hopes and sovereign strain would ne'er whole souled such a king obey who showed not fittest for the kingly sway hence came the governance of the reign to write the county bowing is and he arose at length to kingship when from life took flight his brother sancho sunk in soft repose this whom the brave afonso subjects hide when fence his kingdom from internal foes strives to dilate it what his sire possessed is worlds too narrow for so big a breast of both algarves given to his hand in gift of bridal dowry greater part his arm recovers and outdrives the band of moors ill-treated now by hostile mart he freed and made the mistress of her land our lusitania such his bellic art till final ruin whelmed the mighty hordes where'er earth on Lucis subjects lords see next that genish comes in whom is seen the brave afonso's offspring true and dying whereby the mighty boast obscured been the vaunt of liberal alexander's line beneath his sceptre blooms the land serene already compassed golden peace divine with constitution customs laws and rights a tranquil country's best and brightest lights the first was he who made coimbra own palace minerva generous exercise he called the muse's squire from helican to tread the league that by mondigo lies whate'er of good while year hath athens done here proud apollo keepeth every prize here gives he garlands wove with golden ray with perfume nard and ever verdant bay brave towns and cities reared his hand anew stout fortalice and strongly castle muir while his well-nigh reformed kingdom grew with stalwart towers and lofty walls secure but when drew atropus cut short the clue and shore the thin-spun thread of life mature arose to filial duty nidering the fourth afonso yet a brave good king this proud castillus bravades with equal pride the spies of soul and breast serenely grand for a the lusitanian sprite defied fear of the strongest though the smaller band but when the mauritanian races hide to win and wear hesperia's winsome land and marched boldly to debel castile 
superb Afonso went to work her wheel. Ne'er did Semiramis such myriads see, who o'er the wide Hidaspic prairie trod, nor Adela, who daunteth Italy with dreadful boast, self-titled scourge of God, hurried such Gothic hosts to victory, as the wild Saracens to Pendus crowd, with all the excessive might Granada yields that flock to battle on Tartessus fields. When saw Castilia's monarch, high and hot, such force inexpugnable, fain of strife, dreading, lest all Hispania come to naught, once lost ere this, far more than loss of life, aid of her losing chivalry he sought, and sent the summons by his dearest wife, his spouse who sent her, and the joy and pride of the fond father to whose realm she hied. Entered Maria, fairest of the fair, her father's palace halls of towering height. Lovely her jest, though joy was crushed by care that brimmed her beauteous eyes with tears that blight, and waved her glorious wealth of golden hair o'er neck and shoulders ivory smooth and white. Before her gladly greeting sire she stood and told her mission in this melting mood. Whatever various races earth hath borne, the fierce strange peoples of all Afric land leadeth Morocco's mighty monarch, sworn our noble Spain to conquer and command. Power like this ne'er met beneath the morn, since bitter ocean learned to bathe the strand. They bring such fierceness and a rage so dread, the living shake and quake the buried dead. He to whose arms thou gavest me to wife, his land defending when such foes invade, offers himself, or feeble for the strife, to the hard mercies of the Moorish blade. If, sire, thou deign not aid at all dear life, me shalt thou see from out the kingdom fade, widowed, wretched, doomed to lot obscure, son real, son husband, in son life secure. Wherefore, O king, of whom for purest fear Moluches current in their course congeal, cast from thee dull delay, rise, swift appear, a second saviour to our sad Castile. If this thy countenance, beaming love so dear, sat on the father's fond proud heart its seal, haste, father, succour, and thou hasten not, haply he faileth who thy succour sought. Not otherwise fear-filled Maria spake her sire than Venus, when, in saddest strain, she pled to great old father for the sake of her Aeneas tossing on the main, and in Jove's breast could such compassion wake his dreadful thunders from his hand fall vain. The clement god had all to her conceded, and mourneth only that no more she needeth. But now the squatted warriors must her dance on Iberentian plains with fierce array, glint in the sun-glare harness, sword, spear, lance, and richly furnished destriers, prince, and a. The banner trumpets with a blast advance, rousing men's bosoms from the gentle sway of holy peace to dire refulgent arms, and down the dales reverberate war's alarms. Majestic marcheth, girt by all his powers, the insignia of his royal state among, valiant Afonso, and his tall form towers by neck and shoulders taller than the throne. His jest alone embraves the heart that cowers, in his stout presence walks the weakling strong. Thus to Castilia's realm he leads his band, with his fair daughter, lady of the land. In fine, when met the kings, Afonso's twain, upon Tarifa's field, they stand to front that swarming host of stone-blind heathen men, for whom are small the meadows and the mound. No sprite there liveth of so tough a grain, but feels its faith and trust of small account, that it not clearly see and fully know, Christ by his servant's arms shall smite the foe. The seed of Hagar laughing, as it were, to view the Christian power so weak, so mean, begins the lands as though their own, to share ere one among the conquering Hagarine. Such forged title and false style they bear, claiming the famous name of Saracen. Thus, with false reckoning, would they strip and spoil, calling it theirs, that noble alien soil. In so the barber's giant, huge and gaunt, with cause to royal soul so dread appearing, when seen the swordless shepherd stand afront, armed but with 
pebbles and with heart unfearing, launched his sneer of pride and arrogant taunt at the weak youngling's humble raiment jeering, who, whirled the sling, soon read the lesson well, how much shall faith all human force excel. Thus do the Moormen, traitor souls, despise our Christian forces, nor can understand how heaven's high fortress wanted aid of fies, which in horrific hell may not withstand. On this and on his skill Castile relies, falls on Morocco's king, strikes hand to hand. The Portingal, who holds all danger light, makes the Grenadan kingdom fear his might. Behold, the brandished blade and lance at rest rang loud on coat and crest, a wild onset. They cried, as each his several law confessed, these Santiago and those Mohammed. The cries of wounded men the skies oppressed, whose flowing blood in ugly puddles met, where other half-slain wretches drowning lay, who dragged their shattered limbs from out the fray. With such prevailing force the Lusian fought the Granadil, that in the shortest space an utter ruin of his host was wrought. The fence, the steely plate our strokes could face, with such triumphant victory cheaply bought, unsatisfying, the strong arm flies apace, and timely aids Castilia's toiling power, still mixed in doubtful conflict with the moor. Now brightly burning Saul had housed his wain in Thetis bower, and his slanting ray sank westward, bearing Hesper in his train, to close that rare and most memorious day. When of the moors those valiant sovereigns twain, the dense and dreadful squadrons swept away, with such fell slaughter as ne'er told of men, the page of story since the world began. Ne'er could strong Marius in the quarter show of lives here victim by victorious fate, when to the river, red with gory glow, he sent his thirsty braves their drought to sate. They yet the Carthaginian, Asper's foe, to Roman power and cradled in her hate, when slain so many knights of noble Rome, of their gold rings he sent three bushels home. And if so thou so many souls to flit couldst force, and seek Cassita's reign of night, when thou the holy city didst to quit of the base Judean, firm in olden right, t'was that Jehovah's vengeance thus saw fit, O noble Titus, not thine arm of might, for thus inspired men had prophesied, and thus by Jesus' lips was certified. Accomplished his act of arms victorious, home to his Lusian realm Afonso sped, to gain from peace tide triumphs great and glorious, as those he gained in wars and battles dread. When the sad chance on history's page memorious, which can unsepulcher the sheeted dead, befell that ill-starred miserable dame, who, foully slain, a throned queen became. Thou, only thou, pure love, whose cruel might obligeth human hearts to weal and woe, thou, only thou, didst wreck such foul despite, as though she were some foul perfidious foe. Thy burning thirst, fierce love, they say aright, may not be quenched by saddest tears that flow. Nay, more, thy sprite of harsh, tyrannic mood would see thine altars bathed with human blood. He placed thee, fair Inage, in soft retreat, culling the first fruits of thy sweet young years, in that delicious dream, that dear deceit, whose long endurance fortune hates and fears. Hard by Mondego's yearn for meds thy seat, where linger, flowing still, those lovely tears, until each hill-born tree and shrub confessed the name of him dip writ within thy breast. There, in thy prince awoke responsive wise, dear thoughts of thee, which so deep ever lay, which brought thy beauteous form before his eyes, when there those eyne of thine were far away. Night fled in falsest, sweetest fantasies, in fleeting, flying reverie sped the day, and all in fine he saw or cared to see were memories of his love, his joys, his thee of many a dainty dame and damsel, the coveted nuptial couches he rejecteth, for not can e'er, pure love, thy care dispel, 
when one enchanting shape thy heart subjecteth. These whims of passion to despair compel the sire, whose old man's wisdom a respecteth, his subjects murmuring at his son's delay to bless the nation with a bridal day. To wrench innates from life he doth design, better his captured son from her to wrench, deeming that only blood of death and dying the living low of such true love can quench. What fury wielded that the steel so fine, which from the mighty weight would never flinch of the dread woman, should be drawn in hate to work that hapless, delicate lady's fate? The horrible hangman hurried her before the king, now moved to spare her innocence, but still her cruel murder urged the moor, the people swayed by fierce and false pretense. She, with her pleadings pitiful and sore, that told her sorrows and her care immense for her prince's spouse and babes, who more to leave than her own death the mother's heart did grieve, and heavenward to the clear and crystalline skies, raising her eyen with piteous tears bestain, her eyen, because her hands, with cruel ties, one of the wicked minsters constrained and gazing on her babes in wistful guise whose pretty forms she loved with love unfeign whose orphaned lot the mother filled with dread unto their cruel grandsire thus she said if the brute creatures which from natal day on cruel ways by nature's will were bent or feral birds whose only thought is prey upon aerial rapine all intent if men such salvage beings have seen display to little children loving sentiment, in as to Nina's mother did befall, and to the twain who reared the Roman wall, O thou, who bearest of men the jest and breast, an it be men like thus to draw the sword on a weak girl, because her love impressed his heart, who took her heart and love in ward, respect for these her babes preserve at least, since it may not her obscure death retard, Move be thy pitying soul for them and me, although my faultless fault unmove thou see. And if thou knowest to deal in direful fight the doom of brand and blade to Moorish host, know also thou to deal of life the light to one who ne'er deserved her life be lost. But an thou wouldst mine innocence thus requite, place me for a on sad exiled coast, and Scythian sleet on seething Libyan shore, with lifelong tears to linger evermore. Place me where beasts with fiercest rage abound, lions and tigers, there, ah, let me find, if in their hearts of flint be pity found, denied to me by heart of humankind. There, with intrinsic love and will so fond for him whose love is death, there will I tend these tender pledges whom thou seest, and so shall the sad mother cool her burning woe. Inclined to pardon her the king benign, moved by this sad lament to melting mood, but the rude people and fate's dear design that willed it thus refused the pardon sued. They draw their swords of steely temper fine, they who proclaim as just such deed of blood, against a lady caitiff felon whites how showed ye here brute beasts or noble knights thus on polixena that beauteous maid less solace of her mother's age and care when doomed to die by fierce achilles shade the cruel pyrrhus hasted brand to bear but she a patient lamb by death waylaid with the calm glances which serene the air casts on her mother mad with grief her eyes and silent waits that awesome sacrifice. Thus dealt with fair in age the murderous crew, in the alabastrine neck that did sustain the charms whereby could love the love subdue of him who crowned her after death his queen, bathing their blades, the flowers of snowy hue, which often watered by her eye had been, are blood dyed, and they burn with blinding heat, reckless of tortures stored for them by fate. Well mightest shorn of race, O son, appear to fiends like these on days so dark and dire, and when Thaestes ate the meats that were his seed, whom Atreus slew to spite their sire, 
and you, O oh hollow valleys, doomed to hear her latest cry from stiffening lips expire, her Pedro's name did catch that mournful sound whose echoes bore it far and far around. E'en as a daisy sheen that hath been shorn in time untimely, florid, fresh and fair, and by untender hand of maiden torn to deck the chaplet for her revet hair, gone is its odor and its colors mourn. So pale and faded lay that lady there. Dried are the roses of her cheek, and fled the white life color with her dear life dead. Mondego's daughter nymphs the death obscure wept many a year with wails of woe exceeding, and for long memory changed to fountain pure the floods of grief their eyes were ever feeding. The name they gave it, which doth still endure, revived in age, whose murdered love lies bleeding. See yon fresh fountain flowing mid the flowers, tears are its waters and its name Amores. Time ran not long, ere Pedro saw the day of vengeance dawn for wounds that ever bled, who, when he took in hand the kingly sway, eke took the murderers who his rage had fled. Then a most cruel Pedro did betray, for both, if human life the foemen dread, made concert savage and dear pact unjust as Lepidus made with Anthony and Augustus. This, in his judgments rigorous and severe, Plunder at Valtry's murderers suppressed, To stay with cruel grasp crime's dark career, Bred soul-assured solace in his breast. A justiciary, not by love but fear, He guarded cities from hot tyrant past, Their doom more robbers dreed by his decrees Than Theseus slew or vaguing Hercules. Pedro, the harshly just, begets the bland, See what exceptions lurk in nature's laws, Remiss, an all-regardless prince, Fernand, who ran his realm in dangerous open jaws. For soon against the weak, defenseless land came the Castilian, who came nigh to cause the very ruin of the Lusian reign, for feeble kings and feeble strongest strain. Or t'was the wages sin deserves of heaven that filched Leonor from marriage bed, by false, misunderstood opinions, driven another's wife, a lemon bride, to wed. Or t'was because his easy bosom given to vice and vileness, and by both misled, walks it effeminate weak, which may be true, for low-placed loves the highest heart subdue. Of such offences ever paid the pain many, whom God allowed or willed he. Those who fared forth to force the fair Helen, Appius and Tarquin, eke such end did see. Say, why should David of the saintly strain so blame himself? What fell at the illustrious tree of Benjamin? Full well the truth design a ferio for Sarah, seek him for a diner. But if so weakeneth forceful human breast, illicit love, which spurns the golden mean, well in Alcmena's son we find a test as omphaly disguised to hero queen. Anthony's fame a shade of shame confessed to Cleopatra bound by love to keen. Nor less thou, Punic victor, wast betrayed by low allegiance to some Puglian maid. Yet say who, peradventure, shall secure his soul from Cupid, armed with artful snare, mid the live roses, human snow so pure, the gold and alabaster crystal clear, who scapeth beauty's wills and peregrine lure, the true Medusa face so awful fair, which men's imprisoned, witch-bound heart can turn, no, not to stone, but flames that fiercely burn, who seeth a firm-fixed glance, a gesture bland, soft promise of angel excellence, the soul transforming a by charm command, say, who from power like this can find defense? Party, he scantly blameth King Fernand, who pays as he did, love's experience but human judgment would if fancy free adjudge his latches even worse to be end of canto three canto four of the luciates this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by Lenny. The Luciades by Luís Vaz de Camões, 
translated by Sir Richard Francis Burton. Canto 4. Argument of the Fourth Canto. Nagama pursueth his discourse with the king of Melinde, and relateth the wars between Portugal and Castile, touching the succession to the throne, after the death of the king, Dom Fernando. Military feats of the constable, Dom Nuno Álvares Pereira. Battle and victory of Aljubarrota. Diligent attempt to discover India by land, in the days of the king, Dom João II. How the king, Dom Manuel, gained this end, by resolving upon the present voyage, preparations for it, embarkation and farewells of the navigators upon the Belém beach. Another argument. Aclamado João, de Pedro Herdeiro, convoca Leonora ao Castelhano. Opõe-se Nuno, intrépido guerreiro. Dá-se batalha, vence o Lusitano. Quem a aurora buscou tentar primeiro, pelas túmidas ondas do oceano. E como ao gama coube esta alta empresa, por afinar a glória portuguesa. João acclaimed to be Pedro's heir. Leonor craveth aidance of Castile. Withstandeth Nuno, warrior sent fear. They fight, and conquest crowns the Lusian's wheel. Who first went forth the morning land to spear, and through the tumid flood his way to feel, and how to Gama fell the great emprise, to gar our Portugal's glory higher rise. Canto four. After the horrors of the stormy night, with gloom and lightning gleams and hiss of wind, breaks lovely morning's pure and blessed light, with hope of haven and sure rest to find. Saul banisheth the dark obscure from sight, laying the terror of men's timid mind. Thus to the doughty kingdom it befell, when King Fernando bade this world farewell. For, if so many with such hopes were fired, for one whose potent arm their harms could pay, and those that wrought their wrongs with soul untired, nerved by Fernando's heedless, feeble way, in shortest time it happed as they desired, when ever-glorious John arose to sway, the only heir that did from Pedro spring, and, though a bastard, every inch a king. That such accession came from heaven divine, proved special marvels, God his truth proclaiming, when ever a city saw the choicest sign, a babe of age and speech the ruler naming, and, but to show the heaven's supreme design, she raised her cradled limbs and voice, exclaiming, Portugal, Portugal, high uplifting hand, for the new king, dumb John, who rules the land. Changed in sprite were all within the reign, old hatreds firing hearts with novel flame, absolute cruelties none cared restrain, popular fury dealt to whence it came. Soon are the friends and kith and kinsmen slain of the adulterous county and the dame, with whom incontinent love and lust unblessed the wakened widow showed manifest. But he, dishonored and with cause at last, by cold white weapon falls before her eyes, and with him many to destruction passed, for flame so kindled all-consuming flies. This, like Astyanax, is headlong cast from the tall steeple, spite his dignities, whom orders, altar, honors, not avail, those through the highways torn and stripped they trail. Now long oblivion veils the deeds accursed of mortal fierceness, such as Rome beheld, done by fierce Marius, or the bloody thirst of Scylla, when Parforce his foe expelled. Thus Leonor, who mortal vengeance nursed for her dead county guards, with fury swelled, Castilia's force on Lusitania fall, calling her daughter heir of Portugal. Beatrice was the daughter, interwed with the Castilian, who for kingship greedeth, putative offspring of Fernando's bed, if evil fame so much to her concedeth. Hearing the voice, Castile high raiseth head, and saith this daughter to her sire succeedeth, for warfare mustereth she, her warrior bands from various regions and from various lands. They flock from all the province, by one brigo, if such man ever was, I clapped of yore, and lands by Ferdinand won, and Cid Rodrigo, from the tyrannic governance of the moor. Little in fear of warlike feet doth he go, who with hard plosher cleaving lordeth o'er 
the champagne lyonnaise and boasts to be the blight and bane of moorish chivalry in valor's ancient fame the vandal host confident still and stubborn gan appear from all andalusia's head and boast laved by thy crystal wave guadalquivir the noble island eke while ere the post of tyrian strangers to the war drew near bringing insignia by renown well known hercules pillars on their pennants show e come they trooping from toledo's reign city of noble ancient origin spanned by tagus circling with his sweet glad vein that bursts and pours from conca's mountain land you also you all craven fear disdain sordid galigos hard and canny band for stern resistance fast to arms ye flew warding their doughty blows whose weight ye knew eke war's black furies hurried to the fight the fierce biscayan folk who clean despise all polished reasons and the wrongness light of stranger races bear in patient guise asturias land in that we pusquan hight proud of the mine which iron ore supplies with it their haughty swarders armed and made ready their rightful lords in the war to aid john in whose bosom peril only grows the strength drew samson borrowed of his hair though all he hath be few to fight his foes yet bids his few for battle gauge prepare and not that counsel fails when danger shows with his chief lords he counsels on the fair but drift of inner thoughts he seeks and finds for mid the many there be many minds nor let their reasonings who would disconcert opinions firmly fixed in popular will whose will of ancient valor is converted to an unused and disloyal ill man in whose heart's fear jealous and inert reigneth which faith and truth were wont to fill deny they king and country and if tried they had as peter did their god denied but ne'er did such denial sin appear in noble nuno alvarez nay instead although his brothers showed the foe so clear he fiercely chid the fickle hearts misled and to the lieges steeped in doubt and fear with phrase more forceful than fine drawn he said too fear for facken as he bared his glaive threatening earth seas and sphere with ban and brave what mid the noble sons of portugal that kneels to strike for freedom beats a heart what in this province which the nations all crown war's princes in every earthly part breathes who his aid denies such nithering thrall renaming faith and love and force and art of portingal and be what e'er the cause would see his country keep the stranger's laws what flows not still within your veins the blood of the brave soldiers who neath banners borne by great and hickis fierce with hero mood this valiant race in war did ever scorn when tamed so many banners and withstood so many foemen who such losses mourn that seven noble jarls were forced to yield their swords besides the spoils that strewed the field say you by whom were always trodden down these now who seem to tread it down on you for Genege and his son of high renown save by your sires and grandsires daring do then if by sin or sore neglect or throne so could your olden force fernand undo to you fresh forces this new king shall bring on it be sooth that subjects change with king such king ye have that on ye courage have equal his kingly heart ye raise to reign all enemies shall ye rout so be ye brave much more the routed eath to rout again but on such noble thought no more may save your souls from penetrant fear to bosom tain the craven hands of silly terrors tie the stranger's yoke i only i defy i with my vessels only and my brand this said his dreadful blade he bared midway against the high and hostile force will stand that threats a kingdom strange to stranger's sway by virtue of my liege my mourning land of loyalty denied by you this day i'll conquer all not only these my foes 
but whatsoever durst my king oppose. E'en as the youths who scaping Cana field, its only remnants to Canusium fled despairing, and well nigh disposed to yield and hail the Carthaginian victory led, the young Cornelius to their faith appealed, and took his comrade's oath upon his blade, the Roman arms to uphold as long as life hold, or hath power to escape the mortal strife. Forceth the folk enforced in such wise, Nunu, and when his final words they hear, thy cold and sullen humour sudden flies, that curdled spirits with a coward fear, to mount the beast Neptunian all arise, charging and tossing high the lance and spear. They run and shout with open-mouthed glee. Long live the famous king who sets us free. All the popular classes, not a few approve the war their natal land and home sustains. These fare to furbish armors and remove injurious rust of peace the biting stains. They quilt their morions, plates for breast they prove. Each arms himself in as his fancy feigns, while those on coats with thousand colors bright the signs and symbols of their loves and died. With all this lustrous company enrolled, from fresh Abranches sallies John the Brave, Abranches, fed by many a fountain cold of Taga's rolling sweet abundant wave. The vanguard knights commands that warrior bold by nature fittest made command to have, of the oriental hordes without encount, wherewith Sir Xerxes crossed the Hellespont. I say Don Nuno, who appeared here, the proudest scourger of that prideful Spain, as was in olden days the Hun so fear, curse of the Frankish, of Italian men, followed another far-famed cavalier, who led the dexter phalanx Lusitane, apt to dispose them, prompt to lead his fellows, Men Rodrigues they call, de Vasconcelos, while of the knights in corresponding flank, Anton Vasquez d'Almada hath command, to Avranches earldom rose anon his rank, who holds the Lusian host's sinistral hand. Nor far the banner from men's notice shrank in rear, where sunk by castles borders stand, with John, the king, who shows a front so dread, e'en Mars must learn to hide his minished head. Line at the rampart groups of trembling fair, whom hopes and fears alternate heat and freeze, Mothers and sisters, wives and brides, in prayer, with fasts and pilgrim vows the heavens to please. And now the squadrons want the war to dare, affront the serried hosts of enemies, who meet this onset with a mighty shout, while all are whelmed in dreadful, direful doubt. Messenger trumpets to the cries reply, and sibilant fife and drum and atambor, while ancients wave their flags and banners fly with many colored legends broidered o'er. Twas fruity August when the days be dry, and Ceres heaps the peasants' threshing floor. August, when Saul Astrea's mansion reigneth, and the sweet must of grapes Laius traineth. Sudden Castilius Trump the signal gave, horribly fearful, sounding timorous dread. Heard it the hill Artabris, and his wave Guadiana rolled backwards as he fled. O'er Dodo, entranced again lands a drave, Taga's sore agitated seaward sped, while mothers, trembling at the terrible storm, embraced with tighter arm each tiny form. How many faces there one walks in white, whose fainting hearts the friendly life-blood cheered! For in dire danger fear hath more of might, the fear of danger than the danger feared. If not, it seemeth so, when rage of fight men's sprite to quell or kill the foe hath stirred, it makes him all unheed how high the cost were loss of limb or dear life rashly lost. Battles and certain work begins, and move right wings on either part to take the plain. These fighting to defend the land they love, those agged on by hope that land to gain. Soon great Pereira, who would foremost prove the knightly valor of his noble strain, charges and shocks and strews the field till sown with those who covet what is not their own. Now in the dust-blurred air with strident sound bolts, arrows, darts, and manifold missiles fly. Beneath the dexterous horny hoof the ground quaketh in terror, and the dales reply. Shiver the lances, 
thundereth around the frequent crash of felled armory foes on the little force redoubling fall of nunus fierce who makes great numbers small see there his brethren meet him in the fray fierce chance in cruel case but dread he not right little were it brother foe to slay who against king and country traitorous fought amid these renegades not a few that day war in the foremost squadrons fury fraught against their brethren and their kin sad fate as in great julius warfare with the great o thou sertorius o great coriolane catiline all the hosts of bygone age who gainst your father land with hearts profane raged with ravening parricidal rage if were sumanus holds his dismal reign most dreadful torments must your sin assuage tell him that in our portugal sometimes suckled some traitors guilty of your crimes here doth the foremost of our lines give way so many foemen have its force oppressed there standeth nunu brave as lion at bay where afric seta rears her hilly crest who sees the circling troop of cavalry o'er the tetuan plain to chase addressed and raging as they couch the deadly spear seems somewhat stirred but hides all craven fear with sidelong glance he sights them but his spleen for forbids the king of beasts to show a craven back nay rather on the screen of plumping lances leaps he as they grow so stands our knight who stains and soils the green with alien gore streams on that field lie low some of his own how where with valor dowered hearts lose their virtue by such odds o'erpowered john felt the danger and the dure front of nunu straight like captain wise and where he rushed afield viewed all and in the brunt with words and works taught men fresh deeds to dare as nursing lioness fear and fierce of front who left for chase her wealth secure in lair findeth while foraging for their wonted food musilian hind hath dared to rob her brood runs frantic raging while her roar and moan make the seven brother mountains shake and rave so john with other chosen troop hath flown forward his dexter wing to enforce and save o strong companions souls of high renown cavaliers braver than what men hold brave strike for your country now all earthly chance all hope of liberty is on your lands behold me here your comrade and your king who mid the spears and harness bolt and bow foremost i charge and first myself i fling smite ye true portuguese deal yet one blow thus spake that great souled warrior brandishing four times his lance before the final throw and thrusting forceful by that single thrust lanceth such wounds that many bite the dust for see his soldiers brand with ardor new honored repentance honorable fire who shall display most courage stead and true and there the dangers dealt by mars his ire contend the steel that catcheth flamy hue aims first at plate then at the breast aims higher thus wounds they give and wounds they take again and dealing death in death they feel no pain many are sent to sight the stygian wave into whose bodies entered iron death here dieth santiago's master brave who fought with fiercest sprite till latest breath another master dire of calatrave horrid in cruel havoc perisheth eke the pereiras foully renegade die god denying and denouncing fate of the vile nameless vulgar many bled flitting with gentles to the gulf profound where hungers ravening with eternal greed for passing human shades the three had hound and humbling more than haughty arrogant breed and better taming enemies furibund castilia's gonfanon sublime must fall beneath the forceful foot of portugal here wildest battle hath its cruelest will with deaths and shouts and slash and gory shower the multitudinous braves who are killed and kill rob of their proper hues the bloom and flower at length they fly they die now walks it still war's note 
while lance and spear have lost their power. Castilius king, the fate of pride must own, seeing his purpose changed, his host or throne. The field he leaveth to the conqueror, too glad his life had not been left in fight. Follow him all who can, and panic sore lends them not feet, but feathered wings for flight. Their breasts are filled with a wild dolor, for deaths, for treasure waste in wanton plight, for woe, disgust, and foul dishonor soil, to see the victor reveling in their spoil. Some fly with furious curses and blaspheme, him who the world with warfare made accursed, others that coved his breast all culpable deem, for greed and quickened by his selfish thirst, that, alien wealth to win, with sore extreme, he plunged his hapless folk in woes the worst, leaving so many wives and mothers, lorn of sons and spouses, evermore to mourn. Camped our conquering John the custom days, on foughten field, in glory of the brave, then, with vowed pilgrimage, gift, prayer, and praise, he gave him graces, who such victory gave. But Nunu, willing not by peaceful ways on human memory his name to grave, but by his sovereign feats of war, commands his men pass over to Trinstagen lands. His gallant project favoreth destiny, making effect commensurate with cause. The lands that bordered by the vandals lie, yielding their treasures, bow before his laws. Now Batic banners which Seville or fly, and flags of various princes without pause, all trail foot trampled, not their force availeth, whate'er the forceful Portingal assaileth. By these and other victories oppressed, Castilius lieges long deplore their woes, when peace by all desired and gentle rest to grant their vanquished foam the victors chose, then seemed it good to his almighty hest that the contending sovereigns should espouse two royal damsels born of English race, Princesses famed for honor, form, and grace. Nils the brave bosom, used to bloody broil, The lack of foemen who his force shall dree, And thus, earth holding none to slay and spoil, He carries conquest o'er the unconquered sea. First of our kings is he who left the soil patrial, Teaching Afric's penimry, by dint of arms, How much in word and deed the laws of Christ Mephamed's laws exceed. See, thousands swimming, birds the silvery plain of Thetis cleave, and spurn her fume and fret, with bellied wings to seize the wind they strain, where his extremists meet Alcides said. Mount Abila, and died with tar and fain, Seta, they seize, ignoble Mohammed they oust, and thus are general Spain secure from Julian craft, disloyal and impure. Death granted not to Portugal's desire, heroes so happy long should wear the crown. But soon the angelic host and heavenly choir, a home in highest heaven, made his own. Toward his Lucia, and to raise her higher, he who withdrew him left a goodly boon, building our country on her broadest base, of noble infants, a right royal race. No way so happy was Duarte's fate, what while he rose the royal rank to fill. Thus troublous time doth ever alternate pleasure with pain, and temper good with ill. What man hath lived through life in joyous state, who firmness finds in fortune's fickle will? Yet to this kingdom and this king she deigned, spare the vicissitudes her loss ordained. Captive he saw his brother, Hyde Fernand, the saint aspiring high with purpose brave, who, as a hostage in the Saracen hand, betrayed himself his leaguered host to save. He lived for purest faith to fatherland, the life of noble lady sold a slave, lest bought with price of Satan's potent town, to public welfare be preferred his own. Codrus, lest foam and conquer, freely chose to yield his life, and conquering self, to die. Regulus, lest his land in aught should lose, lost for all time all hopes of liberty. This, that Hispania might in peace repose, chose lifelong thrall, eternal captivity. Codrus nor courteous with men's offer mead, nor loyal Decii ever dared such deed. 
Afonso, now his kingdom's only heir, a name of victory on our Spanish strand, who, the hot fierceness of the Moor's frontier to lowest misery tamed with mighty hand, party, had been a peerless cavalier, had he not lusted after Ebro land, but still shall Afric say, twere hopeless feet, on battle plain such terrible king to beat. This could pluck golden apples from the bough, which only he in tyrants born could pluck. He yoked the salvage moor, and even now the salvage moorman's neck must bear his yoke. Still palms and greeny bays begird his brow, won from the barbarous raging hosts that flock, Alcacer's forted town with arms to guard, Tanger the populous and Arzil the hard. All these, by gallant deeds and fine, were gained, and low lay every diamantine wall, anent the portingals now taught and trained to throw the power that lists to try a fall. Such extreme marvels by strong arms attained, right worthy eloquent scripture one and all, the gallant cavaliers whose jests of glory added a luster to our Lucian story. But soon ambition madded, goaded on by passion of dominion bitter-sweet, he falls on Ferdinand of Aragon, Castile's hot kingdom hoping to defeat. The swarming hostile crowds their armor don, the proud and various races troop and meet, from Cadiz fast to towering Pyrenee, who bow to Ferdinand the neck and knee. Scorned and idler in the realm to rest, the youthful John, who taketh early heed to aid his greedy father with his best, in sooth came Vedans at the hour of need. Issued from bloody battle's terrible test, with brow unmoved, serene in words and deed, Mogur defeat, the sire, that men of blood, while twixt the rivals victory doubtful stood. For that a valiant princely vain his son, a gentle, stalwart, right, magnanimous king, when to the opponents he such harm had done, one whole day camped on the field of fight. Thus from Octavian was the victory won, while Anthony, his mate, was victor hide, when they, the murderers who the Caesars slew, upon Philippi filled the deed made rule. But as through gathered shades of night etern, Afonso sped to realms of endless joy, the prince who rose to rule a realm in turn was John the Second and the Thirteenth Roy. This never dying glory's meet to earn, higher than ventured mortal men to fly, ventured, who sought those bounds of ruddy morn, which I go seeking this my voyage born. Envoys commissioned he, who passing o'er Hispania, Gaul, and honored Italy, took ship in haven of the illustrious shore, where erst inhumed lay Parthenope. Naples, whose destiny was decreed of yore, the various stranger slave and thrall to be, and rise in honor when her years are full, by sovereign Hispania's noble rule. They cleave the bright blue waves of Siculan deeps, by sandy marge of Rodos isle they go, and thence the bark they where the cliffy steeps are still and fain for Magnus here lain low. To Memphis went they, and the land that reaps crops which fat Nilus flood doth overflow, and climb beyond Egypt to those Ethiop heights, where men conserve Christ's high and holy rites. And eke they pass the waters Erythrean, where pass the shipless peoples Israelite, remain arear the range Nabathean, which by the name of Ishmael's seed are hide. Those odoriferous incense coasts, Sabean, dainty Adonis' mother's dear delight, they round, and all of happy Arab be known, leaving the waste of sand and rain of stone. They push, where still preserveth Persic strait, confused Babel's darkling memory. There, where the tiger blendeth with Euphrate, which from their headstreams hold their heads so high, thence fare they his pure stream to find, whose fate will be to deal such length of history, Indus, and cross that breath of ocean bed, where daring Trajan never dared tread. Strange tribes they saw, and through wild peoples passed Jadrosian and Carmanian, end of end, seeing the various custom, various caste, which every region beareth in her kind. 
but from such astrous ways such voyage vast men finds not facile safe return to find in fine there die they and to natal shore to home sweet home return they never more reserve it meseemeth heaven's clear sighting will for manuel worthy of such goodly meed this arduous task and stirred him onward still to stirring action and illustrious deed manuel who rose the throne of john to fill and to his high resolves did eke succeed forthwith when taken of his realm the charge took up the conquest of the ocean large the same as one obliged by a noble thought that that of honour left as heritance by predecessors who in life a fought their own dear land's best interest to advance ne'er for a moment failed of his fraught obligement at what our day's radiance pales and the knitted stars on high that rise with falling courses woo and sleep-worn eyes already been on bed of gold reclining where fancy worketh with prophetic strain revolving matters in his restless mind the bounden duties of his race and reign sleep soft restorer comes his eye to bind while thought and memory both unbound remain for as his weary lid sweet slumber sealeth morpheus in varied forms himself revealeth here seems the king so high to soar away that touched his head the nearest primal sphere where worlds of vision neath his glances lay nations of vasty numbers strange and fear and there right near the birthplace of the day unto his outstretched eye began appear from distant olden cloud-compelling mountains flowing a twain of high deep limpid fountains birds of the feral kind and kine and flocks bowed in the shadows of the shaggy wood a thousand herbs and trees with gnarled stalks barring the paths of passing mortals stood adverse had ever been those mountain rocks to human intercourse and clearly showed never since adam sinned against our days break foot of men this breath of bosky maze from out the fountain seemed he to behold for him inclining with long hasty stride two men who show it old and very old of aspect rustic yet with lordly pride adown their twisted pointed locks slow rolled gouts which their bodies bathed on every side the skin of early texture dark and dull the beard her suit unshorn but long and full these hoary fathers round their foreheads bore tree boughs with unknown shrub and herb entwined and one a worn and wearied aspect wore as though from regions lying far behind and thus his waters which did slower pour seemed adown down the further side to wind in thus alpheus from arcadia fled to syracuse and erythrus's bed this who with graver gait and gesture came thus from a distance to the monarch crieth o thou whose sceptre and whose crown shall claim of earth the mighty part that guarded lieth we twain who fly through mouths of men by fame we whose untamed neck men's yoke defieth warn thee o king tis time to send commands and raise large tribute from our natal lands illustrious ganges am i whose farthest found in realms celestial heavenly heights i trace and yon stands indus king who on the mound which thou regardest hath of birth his place thou shalt hard warfare wage on our account but still insisting every fear to face with nursing conquests and some soil or stain the tribes thou viewest thou shalt curb and reign no more that holy noble river said both in a moment fade and disappear awaketh manuel in novel dread and big or charged thoughts he bred of fear meanwhile his glittering mantle phoebus spread upon the sombre somnolent hemisphere dawn comes and o'er the gloomy welking showers blushing of modest rose and fiery flowers the king in council calls his lords to meet and of the vision figures news and parts the holy elders words he doth repeat which with a mighty marvel heaves their hearts all straight resolve to equip a sturdy fleet 
that men well skilled in navigator arts should cut the stubborn main and forth should fare in search of novel climes and novel air i who right little deemed forsooth to find myself attaining hopes my sprite desired yet mighty matters of such cunning kind my heart presaging promised and inspired e'en now cannot or how or why designed or for what happy chance in me admired that famous monarch chose me gave to me of this grave gracious enterprise the key and with fair offer couched in courteous phrase lordly command obliging more than laws he said in exploits dure and daring ways who woo most perils win the most applause risk life and fameth men with highest praise or lost in honours not in honours cause and when to blighting fear it never bends short it may be yet more its length extends thee from a chosen host have chosen i the dangers claimed by thee to undergo tis heavy travail hard heroic high which love of me shall lighten well i trow i could not suffer more great king i cry to face the steel-clad host sword lance fire snow for thee were things so slight my sole annoy is to see trivial life so vain a toy imagine every wildest aventure such as eurystheus for alcides plan cleonis lion harpies foul and door and boar of erymanth and hydra bend in fine to seek those empty shades obscure where stick surrounds of this the dire dead land the greatest danger and the deadliest brunt for thee o king this soul this flesh would front his thanks and costly gifts on me bestows the king whose reason lauds my ready will for valor fed on praises lives and grows praise is the noble spirit's spur and spell at once to share my fortunes doth propose whom friendship and fraternal love compel nor less resolve to win him name and fame a dear trusty brother named po da gama ic nicholas coelho volunteers trained to toilsome tasks and sufferings long both are in valor and in counsel peers in arms experienced and in battle strong now choicest hands in youth tides generous years lusting for bravery speed around me throng doughty high mettled as doth best become adventurous manhood that would tempt such dumb all these by manuel's hand remunerate were that love through duty might the more increase and with high words each heart was fired to bear adventures per adventure some surcease thus did the minie for their feet prepare to gain the glories of the golden fleece oraculous argo ship that dared the first through elksine waves her ventures wait to burst now in famed ulysses haven mend with raptures worthy of the great design where his sweet liquor and his snowy sand artagas blendeth with neptunian brine ride the ships ready here my strong young band by fear unbridled glad in labor join for those of mars and neptune one and all the world would wonder did i only call fast by the foreshore comes the soldiery in various colors pranked with various art nor less enforced by inner force are they to seek and see earth's unexplored part round the good navy gentle breezes play and blithely waves each airy estandard they swear far gazing on the breadth of brine mid stars olympic argo light to shine when all prepared according to this sword with what of one such lengthy way demandeth our souls would did prepare for death's disport who before seamen's eyne for ever standeth to the most highest throned in heaven's court which he sustains whose glance this globe commandeth that he our guard and guide his aid and land we pray and see our incept to its end thus we departed from the saintly shrine built on the margin of the briny wave named for all memory from the land divine where god incarnate came the world to save king i assure thee when this mind of mine remembereth how twas ours those shores to leave filled are my sprite and heart with doubts and fears and eyes can hardly stay their trickling tears 
the city people on that saddest day, these for their bosom friends and those for kin, and others but spectators thronged the way, sad and downhearted at the dreary scene. We, winding through the virtuous array, a thousand monks and priests of reverend mien, praying in solemn pageant to the Lord, a foot set forth the ready barks to board. On such long dubious courses sent to steer, as deemed the people denizens of the tomb, the wailing women share the piteous tear, and sadly sigh the men to sight her doom. Wives, sisters, mothers, most their hearts must fear, whose love is foremost, added to the gloom, despair, and shuddered with a freezing fright, lest we, their loved ones, a be lost to sight. This following saith, O son, I ever held cold of my sorrows and the sweet relief of mine already weary wayworn eld, so soon to sink in glooms of need and grief. Why leave me thus to want and woe compelled? Why fly, my love, fond child, whose days so brief shall set in darkness, and in briny grave shall feed the fishes of the greedy wave? That, with loosed locks, O douse and dearest spouse, lacking whose love love willeth not I live, why risk, when daring ocean's wrath to rouse, thy life, my life, which is not thine to give? How canst forget our fond fair marriage vows? Why face the waves a homeless fugitive? Our love, our vain content shall not avail, thrown to the breezes as they blow the sail. With such and similar words that spake the tongue of love and human nature's yearning woe, followed our seaward path both old and young, life's two extremes by time made weak and slow. Sad echo wailed the near woods among, as though hard hills removed grief to show, and tears the snowy shore such wise bedewed, drops rivelled sands in equal multitude. Of us the company, ne'er raising eye on wife or mother, marched in such a state, we feared our hearts fall faint, and fain we fly our fixed resolves, repenting all too late. Thus I determined straight aboard to hie, some fare thee wells by custom consecrate, which, though they be dear love's own lovely way, redouble grief to those who go or stay. But now an aged sire of reverend mien, upon the foreshore thronged by the crowd, with eyne fast fixed upon our forms was seen, and discontented thrice his brow he bowed, his deep-toned accents raising somewhat keen, that we from shipward hear him speak aloud, with lore by long experience only grown, thus from his time-taught breast he made his moan. O craving of command, O vain desire, of vainest vanity man miscaleth fame, O fraudulent gust, so easy fen to fire by breath of vulgar, aping honor's name, what just and dreadful judgment deals thine ire to silly souls who overlove thy claim, what deaths, what direful risks, what agonies, wherewith thou girdenest them thy fitting prize. Thou dar disturber of men's sprite and life, fount of backsliding and adultery, sagacious waster and consummate thief of subjects, kingdoms, treasure, empery. They hail thee noble, and they hail thee chief, though thine of all indignities thou be. They call thee fame and glory sovereign, words, words the heart of silly heard to gain what new disaster dost thou here design what horror for our realm and race invent what unheard dangers or what deaths can dine veiled by some name that soundeth excellent what bribe of gorgeous rain and golden mine whose ready offer is so rarely meant what fame has promised them what pride of story what palms what triumphs what victorious glory but, O oh, race gendered by his sin insane, whom disobedience of the high command not only chased from the heavenly reign and doomed to distant and exiled land, but eke from other state too blessed for men, where peace with innocence fared hand in hand, that olden golden age his victims hurled into an iron and an armed world. Since by this gustful vanity led astray, 
lighter thou makest man's light fantasy, since his brute fierceness and his lust of prey bear honored names of strength and valiancy, since thou wilt prize and prize in wildest way despisal of men's life, which a should be esteemed of mortals, nay, held doubly dear, when he who gave it gave it up with fear. Neighbors thee not, the hateful Ishmaelite, with whom abundant strife shalt ever hold? Follows he not the Arabian law and right, and thou wouldst fight to fill of Christ the fold? A thousand cities, regions infinite, are they not his, and covetous earth and gold? Is he not strong in warfare, high in name? If honor be not greed of gain, thy name? Dost leave the foeman breeding at thy gate, who wendest for and far a phone to seek, whereby this antic realm lies desolate, whose strength or stretched walks it ruinous weak. Seekest thou dark and dubious chance of fate, who hearest fame with honeyed accents speak, lauding thy lot and hailing thee, Senor, of Ind, Perse, Arab, and Ethiopia shore? O oh, curse the mortal who the first was found teaching the tree to wear the flowing sheet, worthy the eternal pains of the profound, if just that justice law I hold and greet. Ne'er may men's judgment lofty and renowned, nor genius rare, nor harp sonorous sweet, requite such gift with memory, honor, fame. Perish thy glory, perish in thy name. Iapetus, daring son from heaven brought, the fire he added human breast to bless, fire that inflamed towards a world distraught with death and eke disgrace, ah, sad distress. How better far for us and ours hadst wrought Prometheus, and with loss of life the less had thy famed statue never felt the fire of great designs that gender great desire. Ne'er had the stripling miserably brave tempted his sire's high car nor empty air, the mighty mason and his boy who gave names which the seagull and the river bear. No fierce and prize and fell by land and wave, through fire, steel, water, wind, frost, heat to fare, wherein the human race loves not to range. Sorrowful sort, condition strange as strange. End of Canto 4。Canto 5 of the Lusiads. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Lini. The Lusiads by Luís Vaz de Camões. Translated by Sir Richard Francis Burton. Canto 5. Argument of the Fifth Canto Vasco da Gama pursueth the recital of his voyage, and describeth to the king of Melinde his departure from Lisbon, the divers lands whereat they touched, and the peoples whom they saw as far as the Cape of Good Hope, the chants of Fernão Veloso, the tale of the giant Adamastor, continuation of the voyage to Melinde, where the discourse endeth, peace and true friendship being established, between the Gama and that king. Another argument. Relata o Gama ilustre ao rei potente sua viagem longa e incerta via, as estranhas nações de África ardente e de Fernão Veloso a ousadia, como a Adamastor viu, gigante em gente, que um dos filhos da terra se dizia, e as coisas que passou até seu porto, onde repouso achou e são conforto. The famed Gama tells the forceful king his long-drawn voyage and uncertain road, what countless nations in hot Africa spring, and eke Fernão Veloso's hardihood, how at a master giant menacing they saw, who claimed to be of terrors brood, and other things that happened till was found haven of rest with comfort safe and sound. Canto V Such words that aged sire of honoured mien still was exclaiming as we spread the wing to catch the sea-breath gentle and serene and from the well-known port went sorrowing after the manner of far-faring men when loose the sail we guard the welkin ring crying bon voyage whereupon the breeze made every trunk glide off with custom ease 
"'Twas in the season when the eternal light "'entered the beast that worked Nemea's woe, "'and rolled our earth, consumed by time's long flight, "'in her sixth epoch, feeble, cold, and slow. "'Now in the wonted way had met her side "'the suns that fourteen thousand courses show, "'with seven and ninety more, wherein she ran, "'as o'er the seas the armada's course began. "'Slow, ever slower, banished from our eye, "'vanished our native hills astern remaining. "'Remain, dear Tagus, and the breezy line "'of Sintran peaks, long, long our gaze detaining. "'Remain it eke in that dear country mine, "'our hearts with pangs of memory ever paining, "'till, when all veiled sank in darkling air, Naught but the welkin and the wave was there. Thus fared we, opening those wastes of tide, No generation opened before. Sighting new islands and new airs we hide, With generous Henry had the heart explore. Past Mauritanian hills and homes we plied, The realm Antaeus ruled in times of yore, Leaving to larboard, on our dexter hand, Lay nothing sure than suspected land. Hard by the great Madeiran isle we passed, whose wealth of woodland won her chrysome name, where first our people did their fortunes cast, for name more famous than for classic fame. But not the least, although twas found the last, the smiles of Venus shall this island claim. Nay, and were hers, scant cause it had to fear, Nidus or Cyprus, Paphos or Cythera. We left Musilius' seaboard, sterile waste, where as an egg when herds their cattle feed, a folk that never soft sweet waters taste, nor doth the meadow math suffice their need, a land no luscious fruit tree ever graced, where birds spoil iron in their maws of greed, a soil where naught save horrid want abounds, parting the Berbers from the Blackmer's grounds. We pass the limits where, his southing done, Sol guides his chariot toward his northern goal, where lie the races whence Clemenis sun, the clear bright color of the daylight stole. Here laving strangest peoples loves to run black Senega in tropic summer cool, where Dorsinarian Cape its name hath lost, I clap Cape Verde by us that keep the coast. Now past Canaria's archipelago, fortunate isles of olden mariners these, the waves that play around the maids we plough, of aged Hesper hide his parodies. Lands ever new, whose wonders greater grow, upon the side a prose are eyeing to please. Then, with a prosperous wind we took the port, to take provision of the wanted sword. Now at his island was the harbour tain, that warrior Santiago's name did take, a saint who often hoped the sons of Spain brave slaughtering of the moorish men to make hence while the favoring boreas fend the main once more we sped to cut the vasty lake of briny ocean while beneath the wave settled the shore that sweet refreshment gave compass her courses thence the greater part of Africa eastward left her continent the province jollof which disposed athwart the parts in tribes the negro inhabitant Mighty Mandinga land, by whose good art the rich and lucid ore for us is sent, which curved Gambia's wealth of waters drinketh, ere in Atlantis' breadth his current sinketh. We pass the Dorcades, those isles assigned, of the weird sisters urged the home to be, who, born of several vision reft and blind, made single eyeballs serve for all the three. Thou, only thou, whose crispy locks entwined, Fror Neptune, fightest in his realm the sea, Than every foulest monster, fouler still, The burning sand with viper brood didst fill. In fine, with pointed prow toward austral shore, Across the vastest Guinea Gulf we strayed, Leaving the rugged range where lions roar, And cape of palmas called from palmy shade. The Rio Grande, where the thunders bore, Roars on our noted coasts, we left, and made that goodly island name from him who tried to thrust his finger in the godman's side. There the broad shores of Congo kingdom show, willem by us convert to faith of Christ, where long Zaire's deep clear waters flow, 
river by man of old unseen unwise and now in fine the widespread seas i plough far from callista's well-known pole and list to pass the torrid heats beneath the line which doth the centre of our sphere define what sights this lovely scene shall soon unblast the simiad negro swaying afric's strand and human humans slaves in freedom's dress ah me what rude and wild and cowless band females with ne'er a no males dumb to yes lust superstition ignorance curse the land fair dwelling places where the foulest dwell the black man's heaven and the white man's hell and now our vision had a front descried there in the new have heaven a matter new unseen by other men who or denied or held it doubtful and twere false or true we saw the firmament darker duller side a scant of cellar light where stars be few and the fixed pole where men may not agree if other land begin or end the sea thus passing forward we the regions gain where twice apollo's yearly passage lies twin winters making and of summers twain while he from pole to pole alternate flies through calms and storms caprices of the main of angry elis cease and tyrannies we saw the bears despite of juno lave their tardy bodies in their boreal wave to tell the many dangers of the deep sea changes landsmen never apprehendeth sudden tornadoes storms the seas that sweep levens whose fire the depths of air ascendeth black nights when heaven in rain flood seems to weep and thunders bellowing till the welkin rendeth were but lost labour and would do me wrong in were i dowered with an iron tongue portents i witnessed which rude mariners by long experience want their lord to try vouch for veracious while each one avers things must be truthful when they meet his eye these the sound judgment of the sage prefers or taught by science or pure wits to spy the hidden secrets which in nature brood to judge misfacts or facts misunderstood i saw and clearly saw the living light which sailor people hold their patron saint in times of trouble and the wind's rude fight and sable orcan when men's heart is faint nor less to one and all twas exquisite marvel surpassing power of wonderment to see the sea-based clouds with bulky shaft upheaving ocean's depth with sucking draught certes i saw it nor can i presume my sight deceived me as high it grew an airy vapour let a subtle fume which caught by windy currents whirling flew thence towering tall to circumpolar gloom a tube appeared so thin so faint of hue that men's unaided sight could hardly see it yet of some cloudy substance seemed to be it little by little growing high in air with bigger girth than biggest mast it loomed here slim its middle broad its bosom where great gulps of water were in floods and wombed the wave of every wave it seemed to share while gathered vapours o'er its summit gloomed increasing evermore and overcharged as the huge water load its bulk enlarged in as a ruddy leech sometimes is seen fixed on the lips of beef that careless stood to drink on frigid fountains hem of green slacking her fire of thirst with alien blood sucking she rounds her form with hunger lean and swills and swells till full of gory food thus the grand column greater volume gaineth itself and heavier weight of cloud sustaineth but when twas wholly filled and fully fed withdrawn the footing planted on the main athwart the welkin pouring floods it fled with water bathing jacent watery plain and all the waves it sucked in waves it shed wherein no salty savour mote remain now let our sages deft in script expose what mighty secrets these which nature shows had the philosophers who fared of eld so far the wonders of the world to find the miracles which i beheld beheld the canvas spreading to such divers wine what many weighty volumes had they filled what power to stars and signs had they assigned what growth to knowledge what rare qualities 
and all the purest truth that scorneth lies. Five times the planet which maintains her place in the first sky her swifter course had made, now showing half and then her full of face, while over ocean our armada sped, when poised on topmost yard in giddy space, Land! shouts a lynx-eyed sailor. Land ahead! Hurry the crews on deck in huge delight, and over Orient Skyrim strain their sight. And misty manner gan their shapes to show the highland range attracting all our eyes. The ponderous anchor stood we prompt to throw, and furl the canvas which now useless lies. And that with sure knowledge mote we know the parts so distant which before us rise, with astrolabus novel instrument which safe and subtle judgment did invent. We landed, lost no time, on long and wide blight, and the seamen scattered bow the shore, to see what curious things be there descry, where none descried or ever trod before. But with my pilots I retired aside, on farther sands, our landfall to explore, and leave the solar altitude with span, and map the painted world in chart and plan. Here had our wandering course outrun, we found, of semi capron fish the final goal, standing atween him and the gelid round, earth's austral portion, the more secret pole. Sudden, I see my crew a man surround, complexion sooty as the charred coal, tame as he hide him far from home to take, comes of rich honey from the hilly brake. He comes with trouble, jest, and gait, as though he ne'er had found him in such fell extreme. Nor he our speech, nor we his jargon know, a salvage worse than brutal polypheme. Of the fine fleecy store to him I show, the colchus treasure, gentle or supreme, the virgin silver, spices rich and rare, yet seem the silver not for these to care. Then bade I baser things be brought to his view, bunches of glassy beads, transparent bright, of little tinkling falcon bells a few, a cap of cramosy that glides the side. By signs and signals then I saw and knew, in such cheap trash he takes a child's delight. I bid them lose him with his treasures all, when off he hurries for the nearest crawl. His friends and neighbors on the following day, all mother nude, with night and tinctured skin, adown their asperous hillocks fan their way, largesse and gifts their mate had won to win. In crowds they gathered, and so tame were they, the show of softness bred much daring in, Fernand Veloso brained to see the land, and thread the bushes with the barbarous band. Now doth Veloso on his arm rely, and, being arrogant, weans to when secure. But when already over time goes by, wherein no sign of good I can procure, standing with face upturned in hope to spy, the bold adventure, lo, adown the dure, hillocks appears he, making for the shore, with more of hurry than he showed before. Coelho's galley lightly rowed for land to take him off, but ere the shore she made, a burly blackmoor cast a bully hand on him for fear the prisoner evade. Others and others coming, soon the band grappleth Veloso, who finds none to aid. I haste, our gallant oarsmen strenuous working, when shows a negro flock in ambush lurking. Now from the clashing cloud a rattling rain of shafts and stones began on us to pour, nor did they hurtle through the lift in vain, for thence my leg this hurt of arrow bore. But we, like men with causes to complain, sent such thick woven answers strong and sore, that from their exploit gained some, perhaps, a blush of honors crimson as their calves, and saved Veloso from such imminent fate, Fast to the squadron both the boats retired, seeing the rude intent and ugly hate of brutes by bestial rage and malice fired, from whom no better tidings could we wait, anent that India land the dear desired, save it lay far, 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 the fellow said. Once more the canvas to the breeze I spread. Then to Veloso quoth a maid in jest, while all with meaning smiled the jibe attend, Hola, Veloso, sure that hilly crest is hard to climb as easy to descend. Yeah, true, the daring volunteer confessed, but when so many curs afar I can't, pecking, I hurried, for I gan to doubt me, ill luck might catch you where ye there without me. He then recounted how, when dully made, 
that wooded mount the blacks of whom I speak, his further travel o'er the land forbade, threatening unless he turned death wrong to wreck. Then, straight returning, ambuscade they laid, that we, when landing a lost maid to seek, might straight be banished to the rain obscure, that at more leisure they the loot secure. But now five other sons had come and gone, since from our landfall went we forth to plow, seized to the seamen still unseen, unknown, while from astern the breezes favoring blow, when, as a night closed in, all careless thrown, the crew kept watch upon the cutting prow, deepening the welkin's darkling hues a cloud, sails high o'erhead, and seems the sky to shroud. It came so charged with such timorous stride, in every faltering heart blank fear it bred, Roars from afar and raves the sombre tide, As though vain thundering on some rocky head. Almighty power, or world sublime, I cried, What threat from heaven, or what secret dread, Shall now this climate and this sea deform, What greater horror than the natural storm? These words I ended not, when saw we rise, A shape in air, enormous, soared the view of it, A form disformed of a giant size, Frowned its face, the long beard squalid grew away. Its mean dire menacing, its caverned eyes, Glared ghastly mid the mouldy muddy hue it. Stained a clayey load, its crispy hair, And cold black lips, its yellow tusks lay bare. So vast its eerie members, well I can assure thee, All the double deem to sight, Of Rhodes Colossus, whose inordinate span, One of the world's seven wonders once was hide. But when its gross and horrid tones began to sound as surge from ocean's deepest night, ha! Ah, crept the flesh and stood the hair of me, and all that gruesome thing to hear and see. O oh, rasher, bolder race, twas thus it spoke, than all whose daring deeds have tempted fate, thou whom no labors tame, no wars fell stroke, nor rest wilt grant on human toils to wait since these forbidden bounds by thee are broke, who durst my virgin cease to violate, which long I guarded, where I ne'er allow, ploughing to foreign or to native prow. Since the dark secrets comes thou here to spy of nature and her humid element, which from man's highest lore deep hidden lie, a noble or immortal mission sent. From me the terrors which it dare defy, hear now the sequence of thy rash intent or every largest sea, or every land, which still thy cruel conquest shall command. This know, what ships shall sail my waters o'er, and brave as bravest thou me to work my worst, to them assured foe shall prove my shore, where blow the storm-winds and the tempests burst. Here, the first squadron that shall dare explore, and through my restless waves shall cleave the first, such improvised chastisement shall see, more than all dangers shall the damage be. Unhope deceive not, here I hope to deal, consummate vengeance on the explorer's head. Nor he the latest shall my fury feel, by pertinacious confidence he bred. Nay, ye shall every year see many a keel, if me my judgment here hath not misled. Such wrecks endure, shall see such fate befall, that death shall seem the lightest ill of all. And to the first illustrious leader, whom fame's favor raiseth till he touch the skies, I will give novel and eternal tomb by the dark sentence of a god all-wise. Here of hard Turkish fleet that dread his doom, he shall depose the prideful prosperous prize. Here shall at length my wrath and wreck surpasseth Kiloa in ruins, and a rant Mombasa. Shall come another, eke of honored fame, A knight of loving heart and liberal hand, And he shall bring his dainty darling dame, Love's choicest treasure bound by Hymen's band. Ha! Sore the sorrow, dark the day when came The pair to this my hard and hateful land, Condemned from cruel wreck their lives to save and suffered toils untold to find a grave. Shall see slow starving die their children dear, 
sweet pledges dread of love in fond love born shall see the kaffirs greedy race and fear strip the fair lady of her raiment torn shall see those limbs as crystal light and clear by suns and frosts and winds and weather worn when cease to tread o'er long drawn miles the heat of sandy waste those delicatest feet and more shall see their eyne whom fate shall spare from ill so dreadful from so dire a blow the two sad lovers left in misery where implacable thorns and terrible thickets glow there when the stones walk soft at their despair shown by their ceaseless woe sigh groan tear throw in a last strained embrace their souls exhale from out the fairest fondest saddest jail the fearful monster with more ills unfold our doom disclosing when aloud cried i who art thou whose immense stupendous mould party is mighty miracle to mine eye his lips and dingy orbs he wrathed and rolled and with a sudden frightful wailing cry in slow and bitter accents he replied as though the question probed and galled his pride i am that hidden mighty head of land the cape of tempests fitly named by you which ptolemy mela strabo never fanned nor pliny dreamt of nor old sages knew here in south ocean and i afric strand where my unviewed point ye come to view which to the far antarctic pole extendeth such he your daring rashness dire offendeth enceladus and terrace titan brood aegean and the sentiment the line of me who adam master height withstood the hand that hurleth vulcan's bolt divine hill upon hill to pile was not my mood to conquer ocean waves was my design i went to seek as captain of the main the fleet of neptune which i sought in vain for peleus high-born spouse my burning love lured me rashly to such rude emprise the bells of heaven near my breast could move mine ocean empress filled my yearning eyes one day i saw her with the near aids rove all bare and beauteous neath the summer skies and in such manner she bewitched my will no other feeling can my bosom fill but as my lady's grace i could not gain for being homely huge of form and face i swear by forceful raid my want to obtain and so to doris i disclosed my case in dread she told her child my loving pain when modest thetis with her merry grace replied what nymph can boast whate'er her charms but the strength to wrestle in a giant's arms all gates that ocean may once more be free from this sad warfare i some mode will find to gar mine honour with his suit agree thus was the message to my ear consigned i who no treacherous snare in aught could see for lover's blindness is exceeding blind felt with a buoyant hope my bosom bound in hopes of passion by possession crowned love maddened moonstruck now i fled the war and kindly doris named the trysting night at length my lovely love i saw appear my winsome thetis in her robeless white like one possessed i hurried from afar opening mine arms to clasp the life and sprite of this my body and hot kisses rain upon her cheeks her locks her glorious eyne ha how it irks to tell my sad disgrace thinking my lover in these arms to hold mine arms a rugged mountain did embrace ye led with bramble bush a horrid wold before this rock upstanding face to face which for that angel front i did unfold no more was i a man no lorn and lone a rock a stone i stood before a stone o nymph the loveliest born that bear the main albeit my presence near by thee was sought how could my poor delusion cause thee pain why not be mountain cloud rock vision naught 
ranging i wandered forth well nigh insane for yearning grief with foul dishonor fraught to seek another world where none could see my trickling tears and scoff at them and me meanwhile my brethren who the conquest lost crushed in extremest conquered misery pined whom for more surety that vainglorious host of upstart gods neath various mounts consigned and as immortal scoff at mortal boast i to my sorrows in no wise resigned felt fate mine awful foe begin to shape a dreadful vengeance for my daring rape my flesh slow hardens into solid earth to rocks and horrid crags and stone my bones these limbs thou seest in this mighty girth extend where desert ocean raves and moans and find the giant stature of my birth to this far headland spread with rocks and stones the gods debased and doubling all my woes round me wide winsome watery thetis flows thus parled he and with appalling cry from out our sight the gruesome monster died the black cloud melted and the rose on high sonorous thunders rolled by the tide to the angel choirs with hands upraised i invisible control so long our guide pray god in pity would those ills withhold by adamaster for our race foretold now pyres and flagon gan appear with other pair that hail the radiant wane when the tall heights of table mount we spear which from the mighty giant form hath ta'en standing along now eastern shores we steer and cleave the waters of the levant main the coastline hugging with a northern prow and sight a second landfall o'er the bow the native owners of this other land the burnished livery of ethiops wore yet was their bearing more humane and bland than those who so mistreated us before with dance and joyous feasts a merry band approached us tripping on the sandy shore bringing their women and fat herds that grace the pastures gentle kind of high-bred race the bronzed women scorched by burning clime a straddle roll the slow-paced gentle steer beasts which their owners hold of beeves the prime better than any of the herds they rear pastoral catechals or prose or rhyme concerted in their mother tongue we hear and to the rustic reed sweet tunes they teach as tetris chaunted neath his spreading beach these who seemed glad to see the guest abide amid them greeted us with friendly mood and many a fatted fowl and sheep supplied their goods exchanging for the things deemed good but though my comrades tried they vainly tried for not a word in fine was understood that of our search a signal might convey anchor i weighed and i sailed away now here in mighty gyre our flight had flown round blackmoor afric shore and now regained our prores the torrid heat of middle zone while pole and tertic far in rear remained we left astern an islet first made known by the first squadron whose long toils attained the cape of tempests and that islet found ended her voyage as its bourne and bound thence drave we cutting for a length of days where storms and saddening calms alternate range undreamed oceans and unpathed ways our sole conductor hope in toil so strange long time we struggled with the sea's wild maze till as its general law is changeless change we met a current with such speed that sped against the flow twas hard to forge ahead of this prevailing flood the puissant force which to the southward our armada hove such set opposed to our northing course the winds to waft us onwards vainly strove till notice fast to find us fare the worse it seems in struggle with the drift that drove and forced his blasts and with such color blue maugre the mighty current on we drew reduced saul that famed and sacred day wherein three kings in orient region crowned a king came seeking who belittled lay a king in whom three kings in one are bound 
that morn to other height we made our way finding the peoples that before we found by a broad river and we gave it name from the high holiday when to port we came sweet food we bartered from their scanty store sweet water from their stream but needless here gained we no tidings of that indian shore from men to us that almost dumplings were see now o king what distant regions o'er of earth we wandered peoples rude and fear nor news nor signal had our labours earned of the fair east for which our spirits yearned imagine pray thee what a piteous state must have been ours when all save life was gone by hunger broken and the storm's wild hate and cursed by novel climes and seas unknown our hearts despaired of hope deferred so late till dull despair had marked us for her own toiling beneath those strange and natural skies our northern nature's fellest enemies and now decayed and damaged walks our food sore damaging the wasted frame of men without one comfort some one gleam of good not in hope's flattering tale nor fancy vain dost think that sailor of the sturdiest mood or any soldier save the lusitan perchance had loyalty so long preserved both for his king and for the chief he served dost think the wretches had not mutinied against the head who with their mood had striven perforce becoming pirates turned aside from duty by despair one hunger driven in very sooth these men were sorely tried since from their hearts ne moil ne toil hath driven portingal excellence abounding still in leal valour and obedient will leaving in fine that port of fair sweet flood and died once more to cut the salty spray off from the coastline for a spell we stood till deep blue water neath our kelsons lay for frigid notice in his fainty mood was fain to drive us leewards to the bay made in that quarter by the crooked shore whence rich cephala sendeth golden ore the sea by passing far the nimble helm by men to saintly nicholas assigned where roaring ocean raves on terra's realm this and that vessel's proer absence inclined and now from hearts which hopes and fears were well hearts in such faith to fragile plank resigned as hope grew hopeless aspirants despair good sudden tidings banished cart and care and thus it happened as near the shore we went where beach and valley lay in clearest view a stream whose course in ocean there was spent showed of sails that came and went a few good sooth to greatest joyance all gave vent when first we sighted mariners who knew mariner practice for we here were bound to find some tidings which indeed we found all ethiopians are yet it would appear they held communion with men better bred some words of arab parlance here we hear imported sounds their mother's speech amid a flimsy wrapper of tree wool they wear a twisted tide about each kinky head while other pieces dipped in azure tint are round their middles and their shame present in arab language which they little know but which fernand martins well comprehendeth ships great as ours they say scud to and fro piercing the waters with the beak that rendeth but there where phoebus leaps in air they go whither the broadening coast to south extendeth then from south sunwards and the land is there of folk like us and like the daylight fair here was each bosom with rare gladness cheered by the good people and their news much more from all the signals in the stream appeared stream of good signals christen we the shore a marble column on this coast we reared whereof to mark such spots a few we bore its name that lovely angel youth supplied who did tobias to gabael guide of shells and oysters and the weedy load the noisome offspring of the main profound cleansed our kelsons which the long sea road brought to careening clogged and immund our blameless ethiops who not far abode with pleasing jocund proffers flocked around supplying maintenance we mainly sought 
pure of all leasing, free from feigning thought. Yet, from our aspirant's grave, our hopes immense, bred by this seaboard, was not pure and true the joy we joy. Nay, cruel recompense, deltas ramusia, sorrow strange anew. The smiling heaven mixed favors doth dispense, in such condition dark and dure men drew the breath of life, and, while all ills endure, good changeth often, good is never sure. And twas that sickness of a sordest gust, the worst I ever witnessed, came and stole the lives of many, and far alien dust buried for a their bones in saddest dough. Who but I witness, ere my words could trust, of such disform and dreadful manner swole the mouth and gums that grew proud flesh and foison till gangrene seemed all the blood to poison gangrene that carried foul and fulsome taint spreading infection through the neighboring air no cunning leech aboard our navy went much less a subtle surgeon was there but some whose knowledge of the craft was faint strove as they could the poison part to pair as though twere dead, and here they did aright, all were death's victims who had caught the blight. At last, in tangled break and unknown ground, our true companions lost for a relief, who, mid such weary ways, such dreary round, such dread adventures Aidens ever gave. How easy for men's bones a grave is found, earth's any wrinkle, ocean's any wave, where so the long home be, abroad at home, for every hero's course may lend a tomb. When, from that haven we resumed our way, while brighter hopes with darker hearts combined, we opened ocean where the down coast lay, expecting sure signal ere to find. At last we rode in rude Mozambic Bay, of whose vile leasing and whose villain kind thou must have knowledge, and the foul deceit wherewith Mombasa would her guests defeat. Until safe anchored in thy harbor, rife with all the gracious guest rites that bestow health on the living, on the dying, life, God in his pity pleased the way to show. Here rest, here sweet repose from grief, toil, strife, new peace appeasing every want and woe thou gavest us. Now, if hast heard me well, Told is the tale thou badst me to tell. Judge then, O king, on over earth e'er went men who would tent such paths of risk and dread. Does Demeneus or e'en eloquent Ulysses fared so far this earth to tread? Did any dare to see the seas extend, howe'er the muse their jests had sung or said, as I by force of will and skill have seen, and still shall see? or in the eighth I ween? This who so deeply drank a Fountionian, or whom contend in conquest peregrine, Rhodes, Aias, Smyrna, with the Colophonian Athens, and Argos, and the Salamine, and that, the luster of the land Osonian, whose voice Altissimus, and whose lyre divine, his native Mincius hearing sinks to sleep, while Tiber's waves with pride and pleasure leap, sing, Laud and right they both in wild extremes, Of these their demigods and prowess vaunt, On fable magens, circes, polyphemes, And sirens lulling with the sleepy chaunt. Send them to plough with oar and sail the streams of Sycans, Or the oblivious lands discant, Where slumberous lotus eaters, dazed and died, In be their pilot whelmed in ocean tide. Storms let them loosen from the bags of wind, Create calypses, captivate by love, Make harpies touch, contaminate all they find, And in sad Hades make their heroes rove. However much, or much, they have refined Such fabled tales, which poets fancy prove, The simple naked truth my story telleth, All their grandiloquence of writ excelleth. Fast on our captain's fecken lips depends, as drunk with wonder, all that soul-wrapped crowd, until at length his travel story ends, his tale that told of noble deeds and proud. The high-conceived intent the king commands, 
of kings of notable feats of warfare vowed their lieges old and valorous train extols their loyal spirits and their noble souls the admiring audience to recount are fain each case as each one best could understand none from the hardy folk could turn their eye who by such long-drawn ways the waves had spent now as the dealing youth turns round the rein lampicius brother held with feeble hand and in the thetian arms way where he falls the king high seaborne to his royal halls how pleasant sound the praise and well won glory of men's own exploits as men hears them chime for noble travail actions dine of story that dim or equal those of passed time envy of famous feats untransitory hath gendered thousand thousand deeds sublime the brave who loves to tread in valor's ways pants for the pleasure of his fellow's praise achilles glorious feats could not so flame nor alexander's soul to fight inspired as he who sang in numbered verse his name such praise such honour most his soul desired not but the trophies of miltiades fame could rouse themistocles with envy fired who owned his highest joy his best delight came from the voices which his feats recite Vasco da Gama striveth hard to prove that these old travels in world song resounding merit not glory nor men's hearts may move like his sore travails heaven and earth astounding yes but that hero whose esteem and love crowned with praise prize honours gifts abounding the lyre of mantua taught her bar to chaunt in his name in rome's high glories vaunt Scipius and caesar's giveth lucia land gives alexander's and augusti gives but she withal may not the gifts command whose want rears rough and ready working lives octavius pressed by fortune's heaviest hand with compt and learned verse her wrong survives nor certes fulvia shall this truth deny glepherous wit entrapped her anthony go caesar subjugating general friends yet worked his arms to science no offence this hand the pen compelling that the lance he vied with cicero's gift of eloquence what most doth scipio's name and fame enhance is of the comedy deep experience what homer wrote that alexander read we know whose roll ne'er left his couch's head in fine the nations own no lord of men that lacked a cultured learned fantasy of grecian latian or barbarian strain only the lucian lacking it we see not without shame i say so but were vain to hope for high triumphant poesy till men our rhymes our songs shall lay to heart for minds art ignorant a look down on art for this and not for nature's fault be sure Virgil nor Homer rise to strike the lyre, nor shall rise ever, on this mode endure, pious in years or Achilles dire. But, worst of all, it maketh men so dour, austere, rough, frigid to poetic fire, so rude, so heedless to be known or know, few heed the want, and many will it so. Let grateful Gama to my muse give grace, for the great patriot love that guards her sound, the lyre for all her sons, and a retrace the name and fame of ways and wars renowned. Nor he, nor they who call themselves his race, ere in Calliope a friend so found, or from the Tagus maidens boon could claim, to leave their golden webs and hymns his name. Because fraternal love and friendly will that deals to every Lucian brave his meed of laud, this thought, these resolutions fill my gentle tragedies, and this their creed. Yet ne'er let human bosom cease to thrill with hope to dare and do some mighty deed, since, or by these, or haply other ways, he ne'er shall for fate prizes value praise. End of Canto Five. Canto six of the Lusiads. 
This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Lenny. The Lucius by Luís Vaz de Camões. Translated by Sir Richard Francis Burton. Canto six. Argument of the sixth canto. Vasco da Gama departeth from Melinde. And while he voyageth prosperously, Bacchus descendeth to the sea. Description of Neptune's palace. The same Bacchus convoketh the sea gods and persuadeth them to destroy the navigators. Meanwhile, Veloso entertaineth his mates with the tale of the twelve of England. An horrible storm ariseth. It is calmed by Venus and her nymphs. At length, they arrive in calm weather at Calicut, the last and longed-for born of this navigation. Another argument. Parte-se de Melindio ilustre gama, com pilotos da terra e mantimento. Desce-lhe eu ao mar, Netuno chama, todos os deuses do úmido elemento. Conta veloso aos seus dando honra e fama, dos doze de Inglaterra o vencimento. Só corre Vênus a afligida armada, e a Índia chega tanto desejada. Illustrious Gama from Mombasa saileth, with native pilots and fresh nutriment. Descends Leos seaward, Neptune haileth, the gods who rule the humid element. Veloso, giving praise and honor, telleth of the English twelve the tale of tournament. Succoreth Venus her long-suffering fleet, and thus the wished-for strand of inn they greet. Canto six. Scant could devise how best to entertain the pagan king our voyagers renowned. Firm friendship of the Christian king to gain, in fault so puissant proved, so faithful found. Grieveth him greatly that his rule and reign be placed so distant from Europa's bound, by lot, nor let him neighbor that abode where open Hercules the broad sea rode. With games and dances, gentle, honest play, in as accorded with Melindon's style, and fish and frolics, like the Legian gay, delighted Anthony with gladdening guile, rejoiced that famous sovereign every day, the Lusitanian host to feast and fill with banquets rich, rare meats and unknown dishes, of fruit and flesh, of birds and beasts and fishes. But when the captain saw him still detained, far more than seemed meet, while the fresh breeze to sail inviteth, and he had obtained the negro pilots and the new supplies, no longer list he tarry, for remained long path to plough through salt and silvern seas, to the good pagan bids he warm adieu, who prays their friendship may be long and true. He prayeth eke that Hythe shall ever be the place where all the fleets may rest and bait, for nothing better now desireth he than for such barons to quit reign and state. Eke, that ere light of life his body flee, he will an opportunity await, his days to peril and his crown to wave, for king so kingly and for brave so brave. Response in similar speech to such discourse the captain gave, and losing canvas sailed, straight for Auroran regions shaping course, where his long seeking still so scant availed. No more has guide and pilot had recourse to fraud and falsehood. Nay, he never failed in his sure seamanship. So sped they o'er, secure seas than those they sailed before. They fought the restless floods that front the morn, now entering Indic Ocean, and descried Saul's chambers, where the burning god is born, and every wish was well nigh satisfied. But now that ill Thionius soul of scorn, mourning the mighty meads of power and pride, that Lucian Valor wendeth, die to wend, burns and blasphemes with madding rage insane. He saw the potent hosts of heaven prepare in Lisbon town a novel Rome to install, nor aught can alter, such high fortunes are ruled by the dreadful power that ruleth all. And fine, he flies Olympus in despair, to find on earth new mold remedial. He thrives the humid rain and seeks his court, who gain the governance of the seas by sword. Deep in the lowest depths of the profound and lofty caves, where surges slumbering lie, there, whence the billows sally furibund, whence the fierce winds the fiercer waves reply, bides Neptune 
and the by their lord around narrates and many a sea-born deity where fit for cities leave the waves a plain dry for the godheads governing the main discover the undiscovered depths of sea courts strewn with gravels of fine silver hoar and lofty turrets crowned at ocean lee crystalline masses of the ethnus or however near the curious eye may be so much its judgment shall be less secure on it be crystal or the diamond stone that doth such clearness and such radiance own the gates of purest gold where lies inlaid rich seed of pearl that in the sea shall breed it with rarest shapes of sculpture are portrayed whereon hot bacchus pleased glances feed it there mid the foremost limbed in light and shade old chaos face confused the stranger readeth the fourfold elements eke he sees translate each in his several office and estate there fire sublimely held supremest height who by no grosser substance was sustained lending to living things his life and light since by prometheus stolen and detained behind him standing high on mortal sight invisible air a lower place maintained either which conquered ne by heat ne cold ne'er suffereth earth a vacuous space to unfold there decked with mount and boscage terrace stood eye clad in grass shrub tree of blossomed head affording life affording divers food to every breathing thing her surface bred the glassy figure eke in sculptured stood of water veining earth and interspread creating fishes in their varied norm and by her humour holding all in form carved on another panel showed the fight waged by the gods against the giantry tiphius lies neath eatness serried height far flashing crabitant artillery there sculptured cometh gravid earth to smite neptune when taught the salvage men to ply his gift the courser and to worlds first shown the peaceful olive tree the nervous boon with scanty tardance vexed laius eyed these varied marvels soon he passed the gate of neptune's palace who had thither hide the gods expected visit to await him at the threshold greets he companied by nymphs who marvel at the freak of fate to see attempting such a news it rode the wine gods seek the water gods abode o oh, neptune cried he regard not strange that bacchus comes a guest within thy reign even we highest powers who reck no change are prone to suffer fortune's fell disdain summon i pray the gods who ocean range ere say i more if more to hear thou deign they shall behold what ills the gods befall all hear what evils overhang us all already neptune deeming worth his heed a case so novel sends in hottest haste triton to call the cold sea gods with speed that govern ocean's breath from east to west triton that boasts him of the sea-king seed who had the reverend nymph Celasia pressed was a tall huge-limbed carl young swart of hue his father's trumpet and his courier too the feltered beard and matted locks that fell adown his head and o'er his shoulders thrown were water pregnant weeds and seemed it well no softening calm had e'er their tangles known nor lacketh jet-black fringe of mussel shell pendant from coins where mingled groves are grown for cap and cowl upon his head he wore the crusty spoils erst a huge lobster bore naked his body and of cloth are clear his loins to swim without impediment yet pygmy sea things clothed with sea-born gear his limbs in hundred hundreds spread and sprint with shrimps and crabs and many such small deer which from cool phoebe take their increment oysters and moss fouled mussels while each rib glistens with periwinkles glazed and glib his conch that mighty withered shell in hand he bore and forceful blue with draughty throat whose harsh canorous voice at his command heard every ocean echoing far the note 
Now, by his summons warned, the godlike band straight for the palace left their seats, and sought the deity who reared Dardania's wall by Grecian fury doomed anon to fall. Came Father Ocean, whom accompanied the sons and daughters gotten in the main. Comes Nereus, who led Doris for a bride, she who replenished with her nymphs his reign. And eke prophetic Proteus thither hide, leaving his herd to browse the bitter plain. He came, that wizard, yet right well knew he what Father Bacchus wanted of the sea. Came from another quarter Neptune's fear, begot by Silas, born by Vesta's womb, of gesture grave, yet gay, fair son compere. The wandering waves were blandished by her bloom. A light samar of costly weft her wear, subtle as though twere wove in airy loom, that bare the crystal charms to longing eye, charms ne'er create in jealous shade to pine. An amphitrite bright as flowers in spring, in such conjuncture could not stay away, bringing the dolphin who her heart did bring her kingly lover's wish and will to obey with glorious orbs that conquer everything and steal his splendors from the lord of day hand clasping hand the coupled concerts trod the sister spouses of the two wife god she who from furious athemas of yore a fugitive uprose to god's degree her son a lovely youngling with her boar fated to sit in heaven's consistory they linger sporting on the pebbly shore with pearly conchlets which the briny sea a reads, and now he stays his sport, and rests, pillowed on Penope's delicious breasts. And eke the god, once made in mould of man, who by the magic simple potent spell changed to fish, and from such chance began a thing of time mid timeless gods to dwell, came still bewailing tricksy fortune's ban, which the fair maid by Circe's spite befell, Scylla he loveth, as by her beloved, for love pervert pure hate hath often proved. And now the godheads all in council meet, amid the vasty hall, superb, divine, goddesses seated on rich day's seat, gods throned on tall estrados crystalline. When rose their awful host, his guests agreed, who by the Thebans sat on level wine, fumeth the palace with the rich sea mass. Araby's odors never shall surpass. At length, when tumult sinks to stilly rest, and when the deities all their greetings close, to them Theonius opes his hidden breast, and the sad secret of his torment shows. A shade of sadness marks his look and jest, as though depressed by sense of during woes, resolved with alien steel alone to slay, right soon the lissus men he began to say. Prince, who by birthright holdest high command o'er the proud seas that sweep from pole to pole, thou who dost curb the denizens of the land, that none o'erpass his term and certain goal, and, Father Ocean, thou whose circling band around the globed universe doth roll, permitting only by thy just decree each in due bounds to flourish earth and sea, and eke ye water gods, who ne'er endure aught of injurious in your vast domain, Salmetus, chastisement, condign and sure, dealt to the worms who overrun your reign. Why dwell ye reckless thus? How rest secure? Who to such softness had the power to train your hearts, with reason hardened to behold, this race of mortals, weak withal so bold? Ye saw the wondrous insolent extremes, that there the heavenly heights and arms to scale. Ye saw that wildest fantasy that dreams of conquering ocean tide with oar and sail. Ye saw, and every day we see, meseems, such braves, such insults that, if these prevail, full soon, I fear, of sea and sky to find mankind, the godheads, gods, the humankind. You see that now this weak ephemeral brood who from a vessel mine hath taken name, with sprite high flown, and heart of proudest mood, you, me, and all the world would tempt and tame. You see how freely they defy your flood, 
a daughter deed than Rome's high race could claim. You see they seek to spy your whole domain, to break the very statutes of your reign. I saw how against the many I first to find the path that passeth through your realm, the wave, much injured Boreas, with his brother wind, Aquilo, and their peers, did rage and rave. If to the adventurous mortals who designed such wrongs, the winds of pay the boast and brave, ye, who have higher right these wrongs to pay, what wait ye, doom of justice, why delay? Nor will I, gods, consent, so should you trow, pure love of you from heaven hath brought me down. Not thus your suffering feel I and your woe, what wrongs I now resent are all mine own. Since the high honors, as your godship knows, I won on earth, when fell by me your throne, in this wealthy reign of mourning long the grace, I see abated by this little race. For are all sovereign sire and eke the fates who rule this nether world as best they wot, resolve with fame which ne'er on men awaits to make the abysmal sea these barons lot. Hence shall you view, O gods, their human hates teach God to work God wrong. Ha! See ye not of note and worth we have the smallest boast whose value reason valueth the most. Wherefore Olympus hide I now have fled to seek heart-solving balm for sore despair. Eek would I find, if rank thus forfeited, in heaven your waters still to honor care. More would he say, but nothing more he said, for tears, already trickling pair by pair, leapt from his brimming lids, and as they came, the gods of water felt their sprites aflame. The rage which sudden fire their hearts divine, and roused to such display each vengeful soul, suffered not counsel to contain design, nor discount brooked, nor endured control. Now to great Aeolus they sent a sign, as twere from Neptune, bidding him enroll contrary winds of wildest frenzy, and of all ventures sailed sweep clean the sea. Proteus, the first and foremost, there desired to speak his feelings as he felt him bound, the general conclave deeming him inspired by some mysterious prophecy profound. Yet was that company divine so fired by sudden tumult, break such storm of sound, that Thetis, rising, cries indignantly, Well can King Neptune what commandeth he? Now their superb Hippodades gave vent to furious winds erst pent in prison hold. The while his willful words fresh fury lent, Against the Lucian barons, brave and bold. Sudden, the summer vault with clouds was spread, For winds, still growing fierce with rage untold, Gather, as on they go, fresh might and main, House, tower, and hillocks strewing o'er the plain. While thus in council met the gods' array Beneath the seas, Before soft breezes float our joyous weary ships, And hold their way, or tranquil ocean on the long new route. The hour was that when hangs the lamp of day from hemisphere Eowen most remote. They of night's early watch lay down to sleep, while others wake the second ward to keep. Drowsiness mastered, all half numbed and chill, shivered with many a yawn the huddling crew, beneath the bulging mainsail, clothed ill to bear the nightly breath that keenly blew. Their eyes, kept open sore against their will, they rubbed, and stretched their torpid limbs anew, to seek a waking draught the men devise, spin stories, tell a thousand histories. One gan to say, wherewith may better we spur tardy time, who lags so sore and slow, save with some pretty tale of joyance gay, that heavy slumber trouble us no more. Replied Leonardo, truest lover he, whose firm and constant thought was a aglow. What tale our tardy breasts may better move, and kill old time, than some fair lay of love? T'were not, methinks, Veloso said, thing meet on themes so soft in hours so hard to dwell. The rough sea labors which do fag the fleet, love's delicatest fancies rudely quell. Rather of fervid fight and battle feet be now our story, for I see full well 
life is all hardship, and good sooth I wis, more trouble cometh, something tells me this. All with his words consenting joint a sail, Veloso to recount what e'er he knew. I will recount, quoth he, nor shall you rail at aught that seemeth fabulous or new, and that my hearers learn from this my tale, high proofs of forceful deed to dare and do. In of my countrymen I'll say my say, the twelve of England shall adore my lay. When of our reign the curbing rain so light, John, son of Pedro, held with moderate hand, and when his realm had scaped the bane and blight of dealt by hate of hostile neighbor land, there in great England, where the rain falls white, from boreal snowdrift fierce Irinus planned to sow the diligent tears of wanton strife and make our Lusitania luster rife. Betwixt the gentle dames of the English court and high-born courtier crowd, one day it came that horrid discord showed her dreadful port of self-will sprung for faith in common fame. The courtier throng that lightly loves and sport and careless mood to brood the gravest shame, swear honor they disproved and honesty in certain dames who boasted dames to be. Nay, more, if any knight uphold as true, and with his brand and lance the cause defend, in lists or raised field, the same should rue foul infamy, or come to cruel end. The woman weakness, which but little knew, if e'er such foul reproach, and yet which can, its want of natural force could only crave, their friends to succor, and their kin to save. But as their slanderers great and puissant were throughout the kingdom, none the cause would heed, nor kith, nor friends, nor fervid lovers there support the dames in darkest hour of need. Tempting with delicate tear and doleful air the very gods to rise in arms and aid from heaven for sake of alabaster brows to ducal Lancaster the bevy goes. This lord was English, and in doughty fight against Castile for Portugal made war, wherein he proved the noble force and sprite of his companions and their favoring star. Nor less within our realm he saw the might of love whose amorous feats as forceful are, when his fair daughter so the heart did win of our stout king that chose her for his queen. He, who in person succor must withhold, lest fire of civil discord thus be fend, replied, When I my rights upheld of old to Spanish kingdom in the Iberian land, I saw in Lucia's sons a soul so bold, such primacy of heart, such open hand, that they, and only they, I deem, shall dare with brand and firebrand for your case to care. And if, a grieved dames, ye hold it meet, I'll send my herald speaking in your name, while let your letters, courteous and discreet, declare your insult and bewail your shame. Eke on your side, with pretty phrases sweet and soft caresses, let each injured dame temper her tears, and venture I to say, you shall strong succor see and steadfast stay. Thus doth the duke experienced speak his mind, and of his bravest friends twelve names he quotes, that suitable champion be to each assigned, he wills the named knights be chose by lots, because the dames be twelve, and when they find which brave to which bell dame his life devotes, each unto each shall write and claim her rights, all to their king, the duke to all the knights. The messenger now in Lucia land arriveth, the court rejoiceth at such novelty. Our king sublime to list the foremost striveth, but suffereth not the kingly dignity. No courtier but whose valiant sprite aspireth to volunteer with fervid volunty, and only he high favored is proclaimed, whom for such noble feat the duke hath named. There, in the loyal city whence, tis said by olden fame, arose the name eternal of Portugalia, a nimble bark he bade, bequipped, who holds the helm of rule internal. The twelve in briefest season ready-made, arms and accoutrements of use modernal. Helms, crests, and motos of choice mode they choose, horse, cell, and harness of a thousand hues. Now, when dismissed by their king had been, 
sail from the dodo regions famed afar the luck love twelve who did the approval win of england's duke experienced in war amid a dozen was no difference seen in chivalry while skill and strength were par then one magriso hight and only he this way addressed the doughty company valiantest comrades longings manifold i nursed for many a year the world to explore rivers by tagas nor by dodo rolled various nations laws and varied lore and now that matters fit in certain mould since earth of marvels hath extended store i would on leave ye give a long go round by land and meet you upon english ground and should i haply counter let or stay from him who holds of things the ultim line and fail to find you on our trysting day scant fault to you shall bring the fault of mine you all shall do my duty in the fray but on my prescient sprite the truth divine the stream the mount the jealous fate hath power to nil i hail you at the appointed hour thus spake magriso and his friends embraced he fareth forwards when their leave was ta'en in leon and castile's old realms he traced sights patro mars had granted us to gain navarre and all the dangerous heads he faced of pyrenee departing gold from spain and seen of france the highest scenes and best in flanders grand emporium took his rest there halting or by chance or whim's command for days he tarried making much delay meanwhile the stout eleven a glorious band plough northern waters scattering freezy spray arrived on stranger england's distant strand at once to london town all took the way the duke receives them in his festive hall the dames to service greeting one and all now time and tide are ready for the fight with the english twelve who first the field are shown chose by their king right sure of every nigh helms crests greaves coats and harnesses they don the dames already deem the fulgent might of portugalia's mavers all their own in golden arch and rainbow silks i clad and thousand jewels sit they gay and glad but she who claimed by the chance of lot missing magriso dressed in mourning dye sits sad for she and only she hath not a knightly champion in this high emprise though our eleven proclaimed on the spot to england's court of battle such a size that mote the dames their cause victorious call though of their champions two or three may fall now in the lofty public lists convene the king of england and his suit and court in threes by threes and four by fours are seen spectators ranged by the rule of sort from tage to bactors ne'er did saul i ween flame on such force and fierceness power and port as on those english twelve who leave their walls to front eleven of our porting gulls champing their golden bits flat spumy white the chargers cast fierce fiery looks askance on arms and armor phoebus danceth bright as on dear adamant or crystal glance not less on either side astound the side numbers unequal a quaint dissonance to twelve eleven matched begins the crowd to vent its general joyance long and loud all turn their faces curious to see where loudest brute and hottest bait arise when lo a horseman armed cap a pea pricks o'er the plain to claim of war the prize saluting king and dame straight rideth he to his eleven tis the great magriso with warmest accolade his friends he haileth whom in the battle certes ne'er he faileth the lady hearing that the man was there who would in combat guard her name and fame whence glad the fleece of helly's beast aware which more than virtue vulgar hearts doth flame they cry let go and now the trump's shrill blare fireth the warrior heart with fiercer flame all prick at once the spur all slack the bit all couch the lenses earth by fire is lit the tramp of dastrius riseth with a noise as though some quake of earth rolled neath their tread 
heart-strings and bosoms flutter, gazing eyes are fixed in mingled sense of joy and dread. This, from his charger not dismounting, flies, that groaneth falling with his falling steed, this hath his no white male with vermil died, that with his helm plume flogs his cursor's side. Some sleep to wake no more, in lasting swoon, passing from life to death with hasty course. Horses some riders here or tilt yard run, and there the rider runs without the horse. Now falleth English pride from off her throne, for two or three depart the pale perforce, while they, the battle brand who came to wield, find more than harness holds, or mail, or shield. To waste long words and war's extremes to show, of slashing cuts and thrusts of cruel pain, were work of washerman, who, well we trow, of leisure lavish, vain is dreamery thing. Let it in fine suffice that all you know, how with the fame of high finesse remain, victory's palms with us, and every day a glorious victress did retrieve her fame. The duke, our conquering twelve, forthwith invites, where ring his halls with feast and wassail gay, hunters and kitcheners to toil in sights of the twelve dames that goodly company, who glad had lavished on their saviour nights a thousand banquets every hour the day, long as on English land they list to roam, before returning to the dear-loved home. With all, the great Magrisu, men declare, wishing the wonders of the world to view, abroad remained and performed there, for Flanders' countess notable service true. And being no carbonite, but prompt to dare, what exploits, Mars, thou biddest men to do, he slew a Frank in field, and thus had he Turquatus and Carvinus' destiny. Of the stout twelve, another cast his lot in Elmain, where him fiercely challenged, a wily German, who had planned such plot, his life depended from a single thread. Veloso seizing here, his mates besought, he would not leave the glorious tale and said, anent Magrisu and the mead he met, nor in the caitiff German knight forget. But at this passage, when each pricked his ear, behold, the master cunning sky and cloud pipeth his whistle, waken as they hear starboard and larboard all the startled crowd. And as the breeze blew freshening shrill and sheer, he bade them take in topsails shouting loud, Yearly, my lads, look how the wind increases from yon black thunder cloud before our faces. Scarce were the foresails hurriedly taken in, and sharp and sudden bursts the roaring gale. Furl! cried the master with as loud a din. Furl! cried he. Furl for life the mainmast sail! The furious gusts wait not till they begin, furling the canvas, but conjoint a sail and tear it with such crash to shreds and tatters, as though a ruined world the storm wind shatters. Meanwhile the crew with cries the welkin tore, in panic fear and general disaccord, for as the canvas split, the hull heeled o'er, broad sheets of water shipping by the board. Heave! roared the master with a mighty roar. Heave overboard, you're all, together's the word! Others, go work the pumps, and with a will, the pumps, and sharp, look sharp, before she fill. Hurrieth to ply the pumps the soldier host, but ere they reached them, the rolling sea and tamar's waves, the ship so pitched and tossed, all lost their footing, falling to the lee. Three stalwart sailors, who best those could boast, sufficed not to make the helm work free. Tackles to starboard, yokes to port they lash it, yet all their power and practice to the bash. It. Such were the gale gusts, never tempest blew, with more of cruel will of feller's tower, as though its mission were to uproot and strew on plain of Babel, Babel's tallest tower. Mid the great washing waves that greater grew, dwindled the puissant ship to stature lower than her own cock and was a thing of fear, seeing her in such surges swim and steer. The sturdy craft that Paul da Gama bears, beareth her mainmast broken clean in twain, and well-nigh waterlogged. The crew in prayers calls upon him who 
came to ransom men. Nor less vain clamors to the empty ears, Coelho's vessel casts by fear or tain, though there the master had more caution shown, furling his canvas ere the storm came down. In air the ships are thrown with every throw of furious Neptune's crests that kiss the cloud. Anon appear the keels to settle low, where horrid glooms the deep sea bowels shroud, while Notus, Oster, Boreas, Aquilo, the world machine to rack and ruin crowd, gleam it and glare it pitchy hideous night, with leaven burning all the polar height. The halcyon birds their melancholy wail piped, as they cowered on the salvage shore, remembering a the wrongful long past tale of woes the waters wrought to them of yore. Meanwhile, the enamored dolphins fled the gale to sheltering grottoes in the deep sea floor, although the mighty winds and mightier waves threaten a danger in their deepest caves. Ne'er forge such lightning bolts of living fire against the giant's hot rebellious bend, the great toil sworded blacksmith in desire to grace with radiant arms his stepson's hand. Never was known the mighty thunderer's ire to rain such fulminant fulgor o'er the land in the great deluge which alone withstood the pair that changed stones to flesh and blood. How many mountains leveled with the lee those waves that burst and break with awful might! How many a gnarled trunk of ancient tree the winds uptore with wild and willful spite! Ne'er wrecked those bulky cable roots to see their hills upturned to meet the heavenly light, nor thought the deep laid sands that floods could flow so fierce and raise aloft what lay below. Da Gama, seeing that so near the scope of his long voyage every chance had failed, seeing the seas to depths infernal ope, then with redoubled rage the lift assailed, by natural fear confused, and son a hope of life were not of heart or art availed to that high puissance and that certain aid which makes the impossible possible thus prayed celestial guard divine angelical of skies and earth and sea soul suzerain thou who didst lead thy people israel throw erythrean waters cleft in twain thou who didst deign defend thy servant paul from sandy surts and the monstrous main who deignedest the second sire and children save to fill the regions emptied by the wave if through new perilous paths away i bore through other scyllas and charybdis came saw other certes reef the sandy floor other across Eronian rocks and fame why when such labors are well nigh no more why are we thus abandoned left to shame if by our travails thou be not offended nay if thy greater glory be intended. O oh, happy they whose hap it was to die on gridded points of lances African, to fall while striving still to bear on high our holy faith in regions more attend, whose feats illustrious live in ear and eye, whose memories a shall haunt the heart of man, whose lives by ending life win living name, whose deaths are sweetened by a deathless fame. Thus he, while battling winds so fiercer clashed, like raging bulls indomitably would, to greater rage the raging gale was lashed, hissing and howling through the twiny shroud. The lightning's dreadful nightlight brighter flashed, and dreadful thunders rolled and rent the cloud, as though the heavens to earth an axle fell, and the four elements in battle mell. But now... The lovely star with sparkling ray led forth clear soul in eastern hemisphere. Day's lovely herald hasting to display her gladdening brow and earth and sea to cheer. The goddess ruler of its skyey way, whom falcon girt Orion flies in fear, when seen the billows and her dear loved fleet, with equal anger and with fear was smit. Here, certes, Bacchus' handwork I descry quoth she, but fortune ne'er shall gar him gain his wicked object, nor shall scape mine eye the damned intention which he plains in vain. Thus she, and slipping instant from the sky, lightly she lighteth on the spacious main, 
bidding her nymphs to wear, as on she sped, a rosy garland on each golden head. Garlands she bade them wear of varied hue, on blondest tresses of the purest shine, who had not said the ruddy florets grew on natural gold, which love had loved to twine, to tame and blandish by the charming view the noise and crew of winds she doth design, her galaxy of nymphs, a train as fair as planets dancing on the plains of air. And thus it was, for when in beauty's pride showed the fair bevy, faded straight away the force wherewith each windy warrior vied, and all surrendered happy to obey. It seemed their mighty feet and hands were tied by hanks of hair that dimmed the leaven ray. Meanwhile her Boreas, she who ruled his breast, loved the Astorithia thus addressed. Think not, fear Boreas, ere twas thought of mine, that thou hast loved me with constant love. For gentle ways be love's securest sign. Wrath has no power the lover's heart to move. See, and thou brittle not that rage and thine, expect no grace of me, come to behove, henceforth to murder love by deadly fear, for love is terror, and fear draweth near. This spake fair Galatea in such strain her furious notice, for she watched right well long in her presence pleasure he had tain, and now she feeleth he must feel her spell. The salvage scarcely can his joy contain, nor will his heart within his bosom dwell, or joy to view his dame vouchsafe command, he deems tis little to walk soft and bland. Thus eke had others equal part to tame those other lovers who their hests obeyed, yielding to Venus every wind became tranquil of semblance by new softness swayed. She promised, seeing their loves her aid and claim, in love's sweet wars her sempiternal aid, and took their homage on her beauteous hands to bear, while sailed the ships her dear commands. Now splendid morning tipped the hills with red, whence rose the Genji his sacred sounding tide, when seamen perched upon the topmast head, high lands far rising o'er the prows descried. Now scaped the tempest and the first sea dread, fled from each bosom terror's vain, and cried the Melindanian pilot in the light, Calicut land, if aught I see aright. This is, party, the very land of N. What realms you seek, behold, a head appear. And if no farther earth you long to find, your long-drawn travail finds its limit here. No more the gamma could compose his mind, for joy to see that end is known and near, with knees on deck, and hence to heaven appraised, the God who gave such gift of grace he praised. Praise to his God he gave, and rightly gave, for he not only to that born was brought, wherefore such perils he and his did brave, wherefore with toil and moil so sore he fought, but more, because so barely escaped the grave, when raging ocean death for him had wrought, by the dure fervid wind's terrific might, he was like one who wakes from dream of fright. Amid such fierce extremes of fear and pain, such grievous labors, perils, lacking name, whoso fair honor wooeth a shall gain, men's true nobility, immortal fame. Not those who ever lean on ancient strain, and pine on noble trunk of barren claim, not those reclining on the golden beds, where Moscow's zebling downy softness spreads, not with the novel vines exquisite, not with the languid wanton promenade, not with the pleasures varied infinite, with generous souls effeminate degrade, not with the never-conquered appetite, by fortune pampered as by fortune made, that suffers none to change and seek the meed, the valour, daring some heroic deed, but by the doughty arm and sword that chase honour, which men may proudly hail his own, in weary vigil, in the steely case, mid wrathsome winds and bitter billows thrown, Suffering the frigid rigors in the embrace of south, and regions lorn, and leer, and lone, Swallowing the tainted rations, scanty dole, salted with toil of body, moil of soul. The face enforcing when the cheek would pale, to wear assured the aspect glad and fain, And meet the red-hot balls whose whistling hail, 
spreads comrades' arms and legs on battle plain. Thus honored hardness shall the heart prevail, to scoff at honors and vile gold disdain. The gold, the honors often forged by chance, no value gained, no virtue shall enhance. Thus walks our mortal wits, immortal bright, by long experience led, men's truest guide. And thus the soul shall see, from heavenly height, the maze of human pettiness and pride. Whose soul shall rule his life by reason light, which feeble passion ne'er hath power to hide, shall rise, as rise he ought, to honor true 